Jordan subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan subjective. Jordan subjective perspective. <laughs> All right, we're going. We're rolling. We gotta have the fist away. Fist away, <laughs> baby. Oh. I just broke the seal, by the way. Yeah. At least I think I did. Oh, yeah, I did. I'll probably have to go here in about 30 minutes. Yeah, right. I might hold it in the whole time, though. I know? think I've gone twice in the last 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. I, I just have a weird OCD about everything. It's like once I once I break it, I know I'm going to go. <laughs> Do you believe that's a thing? Yes. Breaking the 100%. seal? 100%. It's just like, I don't even know how it's scientifically able to prove that. But mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I just notice if I hold it. Well, I guess it's if you hold it in longer anyway. You're gonna, you, yeah, you're gonna go way more, and then you're gonna go again. Do you think it has to do with like stretching out your bladder? Shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Like it, it's more stretched out for the rest of the night. Yeah, and you're like, you got it's expanded, so you have more room. So uh-huh. like, oh, I don't have to. Yeah, it's probably it, honestly. We'll Look go with that. Look we'll go with go. that. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> actually speaking, I, I was skeptical. I was skeptical about uh, breaking the seal for a while. Yeah. But then I kind of came around to the idea, and I think it's true. Well, and especially if, like, I go out or something, it's like, well, the bathroom's right there. I'll just go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to be weird about, like, not not actually paying attention to what you're saying right now because <laughs> I'm focusing on my own bladder, <laughs> my own need to piss. <laughs> what a start to the podcast. Yeah, talking right? about expanding the bladder. <laughs> well, actually, I, I, uh, I wanted to start with talking about urination. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you may have seen this on my Instagram story the other day, but I saw this headline, and I didn't read the actual article. I just saw, like, a picture of the headline, and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. But this is the headline. Priest who said he urinated in communion wine was attracted to Satanism gets 25 (laughs) years for child porn. Oh, well, I did see that. (laughs) I remember looking at that, and I was just like, what world do we live in? Yeah, right? (laughs) And I grew up Catholic, too, and it's like, I see this shit coming out. The more and more I grow up, I'm like, I listened to this shit my whole entire life. And I was like, this is the way to go. This is the way to be. This is how you are a good human. And now I just look at all these stories coming out about, like, the priests and this and that. I'm like, I I, I just definitely have gone down to Christian now. It's like, Mm -hmm. I can't even, like, it's just so embarrassing. And I've seen, like, the, uh, I guess it's called the Archbishop, where I was from. I remember a video came out of him defending priests like who were like accused of child molestation and stuff. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I've been to mass like 15 times in my life watching this guy. And I was like in awe. I was like, oh, this is like the head honcho of the Catholic Church. I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. And now it's just like I have no respect for those people at all. And it sounds bad. But I mean, and some of them I feel like they got to be good. But it's like it's just it once you're you've got like it's almost like you felt like you've been brainwashed your whole life. Like, you've been listening to these people tell you how to live your life and what makes you a good human, and then all this stuff comes out, and they're trying to deny it and backstep it. It's like, jeez. How do you even deny that? I, I don't know. It's well, like, you know, we all have sex drive. Yeah. We, we're, like, all, we're all attracted to something. But your whole, like, religion is based off, like, abstination from and sex in general. Like, you're supposed to be in love with God. Mm-hmm. Like, that's your relationship. And, and then you just hear this, and then not only that, but they're not denouncing it. They're just saying, oh, we don't know if this is true or not. You're like, oh, my God. Like, there's a movie about it. I can't remember what it's called, but it's insane. Just trying to come up with excuses yeah, for their behavior. Like, like, are you Trying kidding? to rationalize it. It's just, it. like, jaw-dropping. And it just – and honestly, it's – I'm glad it's came out because it's like, wow, I've been able to completely – move myself from that and i like things about the catholic church like i think there's things that are good about it like the morals in general about like the bible that's why i'm still a christian it's like i think yeah the main lines of jesus were like basically what i take from him is be a good person treat other people how you want to be treated don't judge and all like etc you know what i mean it's like it's pretty simple to follow it's just when i think the problem with religion is all the rules they try to put on it and like, oh, if you don't go to mass on Sunday, you're you're gonna burn in hell. It's like, whoa. It's like, okay, sorry, I didn't make it. I had a hockey game or something. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I had other obligations. I, I think God will forgive me. All the like extreme dogmas, like yeah. the absolute truth. Like this is the way it yeah, is. Like, no other way to it's view like, it. How do you know? <laughs> it's like it's one thing to believe in something, but tell people if you don't believe it, you're ostracized. You you shouldn't be here. It's like, whoa. Do you think that's a problem? Because it's kind of specific to the Catholic Church, right? Um, that these these like 
rape charges of child molestation, child porn? Um, I don't know. I can't say it's specific to the Catholic Church because I feel like there's very extreme religions out there. It's just I, 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 I don't have enough knowledge about it to have an opinion about it, but I'm sure it happens in other religions. It just might be more of a norm or something, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I'm just, I feel like the two main religions are um, a be- like Muslim or uh, Christianity or Catholicism and all like the denominations. I'd say those are the obvious two big ones in the world, but mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I don't have much of an opinion on it. I just kind of, I've kind of pushed myself away from religion. I just tell myself, be a good person. Treat mm-hmm. people how you want to be treated. And that's basically where I go from. It's nice that you had that religious background and that exactly. upbringing, so you can kind of pick and choose. Exactly. It's like, like you just said, uh, treat everybody with respect. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think we can all agree that's a good idea. It's a yeah. pretty good idea. So you kind of get to navigate throughout your knowledge, your prior knowledge of Christianity or Catholicism, and be like, I like this, I like this, I like this. That's way too extreme. I'm yeah. gonna kind of come up with my own opinion. And and. And I've met great, like, priests, like, that I grew up with knowing that would talk to us on a regular basis. It's just, like, it's sad because all the stuff that comes out, it's tainted my view on even them. Even though they, there's a huge possibility they have never done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's just, like, you look at it and it's, like, you kind of represent that just in the way of being in the church. And it sucks to say that. Because I had, like, sisters and nuns, like, like, I grew up getting taught by. And I was just like, wow, this is the way of life. I was like, when I was a kid, I want to be a priest. Like when I was, oh like, really? Oh, when I was, I mean, I was really young. I get like, it's so funny, like uh, tortillas, like from like the grocery store or something. I'd get like, you no, know, like the little medicine cups, like when you take liquid medicine. Yeah, absolutely. I'd take those, flip them over, and push little holes down in like the tortillas, and like serve them out to my family. Oh, <laughs> this is the oh, body of Christ. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. And then, that's and then so I just funny. Grew up, and I was like, my dad was like, yeah, you were not gonna be a priest i knew <laughs> he's like you like girls too much I was, like, I was like yeah that was that was i'm talking like this was like six seven eight nine years old i was doing this but it was just like it just faded that's hilarious yeah, yeah. body of christ before <laughs> and, and you lead the the sister. family prayer as yeah. well get some fruit juice like some fruit punch poured in a cup this is the blood of christ <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah just the whole shebang throw a blanket over my shoulders <laughs> Have like a robe on. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, no. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I was I was kind of uh, because I also grew up and I grew up Lutheran, so I mean yeah. that's a denomination of Protestant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I I was kind of not the rebel, but I was definitely ridiculed for not going to church because we had really? church attendance. I don't what? know if your school did this, but yeah, we had church attendance. Oh my god. Yeah, like and I, I always like I had to lie at points because it was like ridiculous. I never I never went growing up. On like and, Sunday. Yeah, well, like we come to class on Monday. Yeah. And they'd be like, "Okay, who went to church? Did, Did you, you go guys to church? Go to church weekly in school." Uh, yeah, yeah, we also yeah, went. Dang. I think we went like every Wednesday, but like they wanted you to go Wednesday in school, and, and then also Sunday. Obviously, Sunday was like the optional one if you're going to go with your parents or not. Yeah. But I I started to lie. I'm like, like I, I didn't go, but I'd I'd be like. Yeah, I went. That's so manipulative, too. It's like, did you go to church? It's <laughs> bizarre. What's God going to think about that? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> that same school that I went to, yeah, it's Emmanuel it's... Lutheran St. Charles. What? Oh, really? Downtown downtown St. Charles by Main Street. Okay, yeah, I know where that is. So that, that yeah. same school I went to, uh, they did not teach science. What? They did not teach science. They pretty much, like, replaced science with religion. That's bizarre, dude. I think science and religion should go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, That's I agree. That's one of my biggest things. It's like people look at like Earth. They're like, "Oh, God created Earth, this and that." And like, this is a, something I have against science. Is like, they talk about the Big Bang and how there's no way there could be a God because we know for a fact the Big Bang happened. And I'm like, okay. I, I'm a, that's another thing. I'm a strict believer in God. Like I believe in God for sure. I just don't believe in the teachings and like the stuff I've learned. And it's just like you're just sitting there and you're like, well, okay. If God's supposed to be the Almighty. Why would he have just created the earth? Like, you're going to say the Big Bang happened. Okay, what started the Big Bang? Like, two chemicals combust, blow up. Who who put the chemicals there? Like, what, they didn't just come from nothing. Like, because you know you learn in science, energy can't be created or destroyed. So it's just like, where did everything come from? It's like, you don't have to scale it down to earth for me. Like, I look at God as he made everything. It's like, that's why 
I feel like there's so much more for like humans to do and that involves science. And I think that's so weird that religion and science are so separated. I think that's bizarre, but that's just me. Yeah, why not why not try to own it? Why not try yeah. to like reconcile the two? Why why would you want to like I'm not dogging anyone that's like doesn't believe in God or anything. I don't care. I'm I don't you can I, no one knows what's going to happen to us. No one has any proof. So I'm not dogging anyone, but it's like why would you not want to believe that there's a purpose to life other than living and dying and being done? It's like why why wouldn't you want something else? Like I, that's just hope for me. Like I don't want to be on my deathbed one day and just like go to bed and be dead and then just nothing happens that's just it be like i feel like there's so much more that we have no idea about everything's too perfect yeah it's just like everything's too perfect we're the perfect distance amount away from the sun that life can be created in a sustainable environment that we can have this experience of a fucking podcast yeah exactly that's so cool. And not only that, we, we people hate, like, some people hate the time we live in. They're like, it's too material, this and that. It's like, you, would you have rather lived 300 years ago, 400 years ago, working your ass off every day in a field, making your own food, doing this? It's like, you have people that make your own food. You go to the store, buy food, have dinner cooked in an hour. Back in the day, you're you're trying to farm anything you can. You're chopping up animals, like, cooking them trying to start a fire out in the field like now you now you have a cell phone in your hand you go to the wall plug it in you can look up anything you want to know yeah it's just it's just like i hate hearing people bitch about the time we live in it's like we are like we are about to boom as a human do you know what uh uh exponential growth is yeah like how it's like it's not like a straight line it like curves and once you hit that boom it just like shoots up Mm -hmm. i feel like that's what i think it's exponential growth (laughs) yeah that's right that's right and it's like i feel like that's where we're at at humans once this technology takes off it's like who knows where we're going to be 50 years from now i mean even in our lifetime in the past decade it's been exponential unless the world blows up if you want to talk about cell phones alone, laptops or ipads or like tv yeah true like 40 years ago there's like five channels on a tv now you can, if there's nothing on a TV, go turn on Netflix, go turn on Hulu, go whatever you want. Go online, buy a movie. You can do whatever you want. I feel like movie theaters are going to be gone in the next 20 years because people are just going to be at their... It's highly probable. Yeah. It's like, it'll be like streaming music. Like, you know how you can just... Before, it was like, you got to go buy a CD if you want to hear the latest album from uh-huh. your favorite person. That's just, Or iTunes. That's like 10 years ago. Now you have streaming. The second it drops online, you go and you listen to the whole thing all the way through. Yeah, yeah, I like it. And there's so much of it. The, like, the amount of music that is, like, there's so many more artists and people nowadays that make music that are widely known from social media and this and that. It's just bizarre. Do you think that's what people are paying for, though? They're paying for the experience of, because at least me, like, um, what I have access to right now in college is the experience of watching a movie isn't really comparable to watching in a movie theater. Some people have like home movie theaters and those are dope. Why not watch it in the comfort of your own home if you have the option? I don't agree with movie theaters going away. I just think it's going to happen. I think it's going to turn into what music streaming is now. It's like this movie comes out and now pay ten dollars to watch it from the comfort of your own room uh-huh. and but it's like i just feel like that's what it's moving i would hate if movie theaters went away there's nothing like going to see a new movie in a big ass theater just like big ass screen i think that's such a good experience if they went away it'd be the same thing like oh i wish drive-in movies still existed yeah because like, like looking at it I'm like i kind of i kind of wish they were more common than they yeah. are would they do still but who knows exist? 20 years from now like, they could be gone yeah but to play devil's advocate, like, what are you paying for? You're kind of paying for the experience of, like, going out somewhere. Like, yeah. getting out of the comfort of your exactly. own home. Going out in public and, like, enjoying with um, with a wide uh, a wide variety of people in yeah. the audience to – like, that adds to the experience, you know? Like, whenever there's, like, a funny part or yeah. something happens, and maybe you didn't even see it as funny, but yeah. then everybody else in the audience is laughing or, like, a, a large a majority. You just make – you remember – so say you You're, watch a movie at home for the first time with a buddy you've never seen before. You don't remember where you watched it for the first time. But if you sure. see a movie that you saw in a theater and you hear about it, you're like, oh, yeah, I saw that in the theaters. Like it's, it's just it's more movie. of an experience. Yeah. It's getting out. It's getting out of your – I hate just sitting in my room. All, see, like, I, I don't like working, but it's like – when I don't, when I'm not working, it's I'll just lay around. It's like, well, I kind of wish I was working right now, make some money. But at the same time, there's so much other things I could be doing. 
Just Absolutely. Stressful. With I've definitely had that experience. I yeah. was not like anti work, but I was like, ah, oh, I don't want to work yeah. that much. And I went like for like a few months unemployed. Yeah. And I, I wanted, I, I just kind of realized I'm a lot happier whenever I know I have like some good, whenever, yeah. as far as money's concerned, I got some offense going. Well, you know, I can play some pretty good defense. I can live frugally. Yeah. I can live like minimizing expenses. But just knowing that you're going to be spending money on a daily basis, whether you like it or not. And, and with us being to have that to have that source of revenue yeah. coming in, you feel better about yourself, especially as a man. You feel more secure. You're just like I, I know I have money coming in. But the thing is with that is like if you you when people say this is like so cliche, but I it's so real. It's like if you don't enjoy your job, you gotta find a job that's gonna make you happy. And we're in college, so it's different. We're just trying to make ends meet right now until we get into the real world. But it's like if you don't have a job that's making you happy, you're gonna yeah, you're gonna hate going into it. You're gonna mm-hmm. hate waking up in the morning and being like, Oh, I gotta spend the next nine out eight, nine hours here and just be miserable about it. But it's like it's also an outlook, but if you don't have a job you don't like, you're you're gonna hate it waking up in the morning and going to see but or going to do go to your work. But at the same time it's like what else would you be doing? It's good to wake up early, it's good to get going and not because I would sleep until noon if I didn't have a job every day. Yeah, like, sure. What else am I going to do? Just It's not like I'm a kid. I'm going to go run around and ride my bike everywhere all day long, which I could. But I miss those days. I do miss those days. And it feels like they were so long ago. And we're still young. It really wasn't that long ago, but it feels like it to us. Because how old are you? 23, 22? Yeah, 23. Yeah, I just turned 22, and it's like, oh, I feel like it was so long ago. It really wasn't. We'll, we'll really feel old when we're like 30, 40, and we're like, oh, my God. I can't even remember. And well, you re- you'll remember like your best memories, but your childhood is just like a blur at that point. Like high school for me is like a blur now. Yeah, same. It's like, it's like wow. And I Actually, like, funny thing you said that because yeah. I had a journal. I, ca- I came to the realization around like – I guess it would have been like sometime in middle school. Yeah. I'm like, okay, what happened six months ago? Yeah. I don't really remember that well. <laughs> exactly. What happened and a week that, ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Literally. Is that's where it's getting to. It's just what happened yesterday? Like, if you had to recall everything that happened in the series of events that happened just yeah. yesterday or two days ago, like three days ago, you start to challenge yourself in a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah. So I, I came to the realization, I'm like, I think documentation of your life is important. Because yeah. that's history. That's it history. Is. And it, it, even if it doesn't matter to anybody else, it matters to me. Yeah. So I was like, I started, I started a journal. And not a diary, big yeah. difference. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I started a journal back in high school, freshman yeah. year. I literally wrote down everything yeah. between uh, between freshman year and senior year. Damn. I had it all in a journal. There's some fucked up things in that <laughs> journal, man. There are some – my, my well, high school awesome, memories man. are way wilder than my college personally. But um, See, but with that being said, yeah. I, I wrote it all down. I put it in the top drawer of my dresser. My youngest sister found it. <laughs> she found it. No big deal. I don't care that much that she found it. There are some things in there I'd rather her just not know. Yeah. I confronted her on it because I somehow through through the wire, somebody in my family yeah. told me that she had taken it. I told her and she got really defensive. I, oh, to this oh. day, have no idea where she took it or what she did with it. Damn. Maybe she read something she didn't like and she so burned it. So you don't it. have it anymore? No. And I, I'm like, that's oh, something man. I've told her. I'm like... To be honest, I love you. You're oh like you're God. such an awesome sibling and whatnot, but <laughs> but those memories are irreplaceable and you like like yeah. I'm I'm never gonna fully forgive you on this if we're no, being honest. That's not right. <laughs> not that I dwell on it, I'm like no, like I'm not I'm not feeling like anger towards yeah, her right yeah. now. I'm just like I'm like I'm upset at the fact that that's gone and yeah. the fact that it could have been prevented and yeah. she's like the cause of it. I'm like Damn. I love you. But I'm upset See, about it. I was listening I'm to this whole let thing, you know. thinking about that you still had it, and I'm like, oh, if you don't have it anymore, I'm like, oh man. I still have. I I kept doing. I still do. I I don't do it as well as I used to, but I I have it going, and I start. I get smarter. Yeah. I started doing it on Google Drive, so I get okay. it like on the yeah. internet. Yeah. But That's I I going. still have all of college, which is cool. But That's like not going anywhere. Those unless. high school, like you said, like dude, yeah. I I don't remember high school that well at all. I remember some like big events and. Also, whenever you get with, like, your high school buddies, mm-hmm. like, if you were to, like, if you were to be sitting around, like, if I was somebody you went to high school with and we were just yeah. reminiscing on your experience of, like, oh, you remember that time freshman year whenever we went to that party? Yeah. And we line danced. Yeah. And then we, <laughs> uh, that guy got punched in the face. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's yeah, so crazy. Exactly. That's absolutely amazing. Let that, like, you, you start to, 
memories are weird like that to where you get with those people to where they happen and you start to fully remember that experience you know what's crazy is when we're talking about technology and like shit that we didn't have 10 years ago to now actually i want to say something else about your high school point before i forget it so like you're saying you like you were had crazier times in high school and college like high i i don't like when people well some people don't have a good time in high school and that's understandable like high school is a weird point in your life where some people have it really rough and then some people just enjoy it for me personally high school was so much different than college i'm still in college but i like i can never compare the two like i enjoyed high school so much cuz i was growing up and i was young and innocent and like i wasn't really a bad kid in high school i wasn't doing anything crazy i get drunk every once in a while but like it's just such a different experience and then you meet so many people that are going to be your like best friends and for me personally like i live far away from a lot of people i go to college with so it's like i know i'm going to see them when i graduate but i know when i go back home the people i'm going to be with are my day one high school boys just because they were all so close to each other we haven't like grown apart at all and it's just like i it's so nice for me to know that i will be friends with those people for the rest of my life and it's just like I feel bad for people that don't have that experience because I know it's not easy for a lot of people. Like some people are still trying to find themselves in high school. I've just always had a pretty good grasp of who I am as a person, and it's never really faltered. Like I've made mistakes and shit like that, but it's I've always felt confident in myself. And But that brings me back to um, when we're talking about things that we didn't have 10 years ago that we have now. These kids growing up in grade school that have, like, Snapchat and Instagram and all this, now we have these Snapchat memories and Instagram memories. These kids are documenting their whole life from, like – and kids have, like, phones in, like, fourth grade now. And they're on these – they're on Snapchat. They're doing all this stuff. It's, like, they're going to have memories from when they were 8, 9, 10 years old their whole life, depending on how – if Snapchat doesn't die or anything. Think about it, like – they're going to every year, like, you know how on Snap, do you even have Snapchat anymore? I don't. Yeah. I was going to go Snapchat you today, and I, uh-huh. I just thought about that. I was like, I was Snapchatting you our Heinekens as I was pulling up to your house. <laughs> and I was like, hey, and I was like, scrolling for your name. I was like, he's not in here. He doesn't have Snapchat anymore. But anyway, so like, the, the account still exists. Yeah. But I, I don't actually like use them. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't have the app downloaded. Yeah, that's smart. You don't need it. Uh, just bad. I don't like social media for real, but, um, it's just like you have so now on Snapchat. I don't know how, how recently you've had it, but like, if you post a Snapchat say a year ago today, it'll pop up today. Oh, really? Say, yeah, and like, and like your camera roll, whatever. It'll say your Snapchat memories and whatever you posted a year ago that day. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll show up and it'll be like it'll just have the picture or the video, whatever you were doing a year ago that day. Uh-huh. And it'll even have it like now they're doing it for every month. So, like, for every Snapchat I posted in July, at the end of the month, at the beginning of August, I'll get, like, a memories for your July Snapchats. And it sends me the Snapchat, and I just go through all of them, and I can save them. So these kids growing up that are, like, 9, 10 years old, they're going to have memories for their whole life. They're going to know exactly what they looked like, what they were doing, like, who they are hanging out with. When And when we think about it, like what we were just talking about. What they were going through at that yeah, point in yeah. their life. Yeah. Let's say you post a song, you're sad. You post a song in your story to try to get some help from someone or whatever it is you may be doing. Say like – but like you're so young. You're going to know your whole life documented up to the point where you're at and, and past that. It's like when I can't remember anything from when I was 8, 9, 10 years old. I can remember some things, like, but it's like one tiny memory. It might not even mean anything. It's just like, oh, wow. this. Do you have those memories? I'm kind of rambling. No, no, you're like, fine. When they just like pop out at you, and it's like something so random. It could be like someone you saw or like something you bought from a gas station at some weird date, but something just happened to you, and you like it clicked, and you're like, I'm never going to forget this moment. Just I don't know why. Uh-huh. Do you ever have anything like that? I, I've absolutely, always, absolutely. Really, like there's things I, I'm trying to think of something specific. But. One that's coming ahead right now yeah, is same. like I grew up at St. Charles. Yeah. Uh, so – I was in first grade, and I used to hang out. I had one other first grade friend and then a friend in sixth grade and a friend in seventh grade. And I remember one day, for whatever reason, this was like one of my main memories of my old house. But I I was out in the yard uh, wrestling. I used to wrestle with these kids, and they just kicked my ass. And there was something weird about me to where, like, I had, like, this, like, resilience to where I would would just – no matter how much they were like kicking my ass, because they won every time, and yeah. they're, they're in sixth grade, I'm in yeah. first grade, it was no competition. And uh, no matter how much they won, I just never gave up, and yeah. I, I was just like loved that. 
You and know, he was shoving my this my sixth grade friend had me like face down, shoving my head in the dirt. Yeah. And he's like, "Give up, give up!" And I'm like, "No, I won't no. give up." He's like, "Eat the grass." I'm like, "No, I won't give up." <laughs> and then my parents were literally watching this, and yeah. they're and he's like, I, I just remember him being like, "Yeah, he's not giving up," and yeah. I'm like, "I'm not giving up." You know, I think so. My dad's got. Uh, and then we played an N64 right after that. <laughs> <laughs> N64 is legit. Yeah, right. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> So my dad's got two older brothers. I've always thought if you have an older brother or someone like that who pushes you, you become so much stronger as a person growing up. Like someone you know that's stronger than you or better than you at something, and they just always beat you at it. But I feel like that makes you grow as a person. Like you're always, like you said, you didn't give up. You're always fighting. You know you're probably not going to win, but you're not giving up. And I feel like that's so good to have someone that like that in your life. Because if someday you need to, like, defend yourself, and it doesn't even have to be with, like, a fight or getting in an argument with someone. It could be something, like, like uh, psychological. Just, like, you've learned from growing up with someone who's taught you because they're older and you've been through it. It's like you are going to be so much more well off. And I love my sister to death, but I didn't really have that because I'm, I'm the youngest. I'm one of two kids. And I, I love my sister to death, but she's not going to sit there and wrestle me and fight with me and shit like that. Uh-huh. So, you know Tom Hafner? No, I don't. He's one of my buddies from Duchenne. So okay. anyway, he had a little brother that was – he's like – he's going to be a junior in high school now. So we were like, shit, six, seven years older than him. And we'd go outside. And just like you were saying, we play football, and Tom's his older brother. So he's like six years older than me. He's going to push him around a little bit uh-huh. just because he can. Like <laughs> It's his brother. And it's just like – there's so many funny stories. His brother would start like bawling because <laughs> Tom would be like physical like – you look at the shit he did, and you're like, damn, that probably hurt really bad. <laughs> and it's like, it's his brother, though. I'm not going to – because I do the same shit. Not uh-huh. to that extent, but, like, <laughs> I still do it. I'm like, come on, little bit. Because like, you're trying to get people to, like, say you're going out back playing baseball. You have, like, five guys. You're like, oh, man, we need more people. And you're like, Troy, come on out here. Come on, we need people to play with us. And then you just ragged on him. But I feel – because that kid's a badass now. He's in high school. He's not, like, cool and scary matters but he's cool as shit he's like confident in himself he's good at hockey he's doing all this stuff with him in life and i feel like it's because he had people in his life to push him it's like and i th- that for me personally that was my dad like my dad was always pushing me to do what i wanted to do and it was like with hockey but I, that's always what i wanted to do there's some people who are like they get like risks with their dad because they want him to be so good at a sport and they don't want to do it that never happened with me i always loved hockey and i kind of accepted that I wasn't going anywhere after college with Good it. for you. Yeah. Good but, for you. But it's like. That's so sad to see. That yeah. that dynamic of like father, son. Yeah, son doesn't really want it, but father wants it more than yeah. him. And he's living like vicariously through yeah. him. It's just like, oh, it's so sad to see. And I definitely had like moments where I was like, all right, get off my back. Like, I'm good. I know what I want to be doing. And he would lay off and he'd just be like, we, we maybe got like one or two arguments about hockey my whole life. And Sounds like a really healthy dynamic. Oh, my dad is the man. I fucking love him. Like, That's awesome. We've always had, same with my mom, we've always had such a good relationship. Like, they push me like, as much as they need to, and then they lay off. And there's things that I realize now that I should have listened to more, like, about my dad. Like, like because at the time, I did want to go far with hockey, but I wasn't putting in the effort. And he was like, are you going to the gym? Are you working out? I was like, I mean, yeah, every once in a while. He's like, well, you need to be in the gym. If you want to do this, you need to be in the gym. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And it's just like, and now I look back at it. If I would have been going to the gym, like he said, I probably should have been. I'd probably be further than where I am now because yeah. I was I was being a lazy piece of shit. <laughs> and now it's it's funny because now I'm in like the last year of my life. And now I am working out all the time and I am taking care of myself. And but it's just like too little, too late. But at the same time, I'm not upset about it. Like it's so hard to get to those places. And there's people who put in time and effort into that and never make it. And it's just like. You're saying like professional hockey yeah, or professional yeah. anything? It's, the odds of making the National Hockey League are just unrealistic. It's like literally point zero zero one percent of hockey players make it. Yeah, right. And it's not a reason not to try, but it's also when you realize you're not going to make it because there's signs. Like you got to be playing at a certain level at a certain point. There's signs. So you got to realize, hey, this might not happen for me. Figure out something else you like to do. And like – Figure out how you're going to be happy because hockey's been my life since I can remember, like every year, all year round. And it's just like now I realize it's slowing down and I'm like, okay, you're going to have a job, but find something else that's going to interest you like that did. 
and make you drive like that did. And I'm sure I can. I do the exact same yeah. thing. That, yeah. I love that philosophy. And it's so weird, though, because I've never had to go through that yet. And I will now. But it, I, I, I'm never a person that is really stressed a ton. And I'm lucky to say that. I do stress, but it's like I never let things stress me out to the point where it's a problem. Like, I always grab a hold of myself. I'm like, hey, you're going to be all right. It's always been fine. Like, just chill out. That mental yeah. calmness. Yeah. Just like, because there'll be times where I get down and it's like real bad. And then you're just like, you know what? What are you so upset about? That's like, a, that's really a form of like resilience, like yeah. pushing yourself. Because you got to be able to have that like inner dialogue to where you're communicating to yourself. You're thinking it through. You're like, this is really tough what I'm going through right now, but yeah. it's going to get better. Like, you, you don't want to just like, Face the hard thing and be like, get yeah. better, get better, get exactly. better. Like you got to talk yourself through it too. It's you like, hey, man. Like, healthy relationship with yourself. Like, it's like it's like therapy for yourself. Yeah. Like, and that's something I've always been so confident in myself with. Is I know that I am confident in who I am. I said that earlier. It's like, and it's nothing to be. I'm like not being cocky. It's just I know who I am, and I know. So that, digging deeper on that, you said because I I would agree with that. Like I feel like I had a pretty, in comparison to most kids. For whatever reason, I don't know why this is necessarily, but I feel like I had a, in high school, I wasn't really, I was finding myself, but I wasn't, you yeah. know, like I, I wasn't like insecure. I don't, I didn't have a ton of experiences of like, I'm not good enough or like social anxiety or anything like yeah. crazy like that. I, I feel like I had, I was always very confident in who I was and yeah. from, from honestly pretty young ages and it. What, why would you say that is for you? I feel like sports played a big part for me personally. Yeah, I'd say so too because sports, like, I'm not a huge jock by any means. Like, I play hockey, but it's like, I'm not, it's not my life. I have so much other shit that I do every day that, like, it's not my life. But at the same time, it's a huge part of my life. And it's just like, I feel like that is part of it is because there is times, say with like an injury or something like that. It's like, that's a tough part thing to go through. When you say you're having like a really good season and then you just get this injury that knocks you out of what you're doing and knocks you completely out of your groove. Like that's hard when something's that big a part of your life and you like, look at these NBA players. I mean, they're getting paid so much money, but like they get this injury they're having a career season and even with hockey players in the nhl and you're just done and it's like you have to mentally get through that and it's not even that like i had concussion problems so like this is probably one of the hardest things i ever went through in my life so i had i'd had i'd never had a concussion up until my senior year of high school and i took this weird hit to the head it was so innocent practice but my head just whiplashed and it went back and I, oh. I never had a concussion before, but I was sitting there. I was like, so what, what did it hit? It, so like, so, you, I mean, so you're making had, like a neck jerk. So but. someone had turned around. They didn't see me there. Uh -huh. And their stick, you know what a cross check is? Uh, no, I'm not exactly so sure. So like when you're not expecting something, you'll stick like, so know how you hold your stick like this? Absolutely. You'll stick it up like this, like a cross check and you just push. Uh -huh. So the kid turned around and he didn't see me. Is that legal in hockey? No, it's not. It's a penalty, but it was a practice. It was like a kid on my own team. Uh huh. And um, so that's something you do like when you're defending yourself. It's like you don't expect something to happen. So he just put his hands up and it dented my cage and my head went back. And that, I never mm. had a concussion and I've been hitting the head a lot. That was the first time I was like, yeah, I, something's not right. And I just went to the bench and I like threw my helmet off and I went. I was seeing stars. Wait, did shit. he hit you in the head? Yeah. Or oh, oh yeah. it was right in. The Wait, head. back or front or the, side? It was right in the cage, so it dented my cage. Yeah. Do you know what like oh. the hockey cages are? I I, I picked it off on yeah. like context clues, but it's kind of like a lacrosse cage. Just yeah, like absolutely. A helmet and a cage on it. Okay, and absolutely. So that happened, and then so I was fine for a while. I got another concussion the next year at the end of the season, my first year at Most State. And then the following year, so I had a great year in my freshman year. The following year, like four games in, I, I, I had a huge freshman year. And then we're at Iowa State, and this kid on my team hits a kid on Iowa State who falls into me, hits his head right on mine, and I smack the ice when I fall. Oh, so it's like double collision. Yeah. Bang, and bang. It, it, so it was so innocent like because I'm, I'm a, like more of a skill guy. And both of those, if you think about it, like yeah. they, they're going – you're go you're going, I'm going forcefully into him. Yeah. And he's going this way. So you're you're hitting one force and then you're yeah. falling back into the ice another force. Yeah. And the, the Oh wow. And so like 
I was just – and I had such a good year, and I ended the first one with a concussion. And then I come back, and I'm pretty sure I got one because I play inline hockey too on rollerblades. Uh-huh. And in the summer, there was like four seconds left in this inline game at Nationals. And I just – me and this kid are at the face-off. Take, you, know, you, you know what a face-off is, right? Yeah. Just to start the game. Or, well, this was my, like – my, gra- feel my, like an no, ass for saying – No, know, no, my grandpa just had a funny joke that no. he always – well, I don't know if you've heard this before. Yeah. Sorry to no, you're segue fine. on this uh, side, little side comment. But my grandpa used to always be like, did you hear about the uh, Lepers hockey game? <laughs> there was a face-off in the quarter. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 oh my god! My that. grandpa's a funny uh, motherfucker. I that. So, <laughs> that is funny. He'd be bad that I called him a funny motherfucker, yeah, but, but he's a funny motherfucker. So anyway, where was I at? Uh, uh did you asked if I knew what a face off is. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm in the summer at this national tournament, and there's like four seconds left in the game. We're winning. I'm feeling great, and me and this kid are at the face off, and you get lower for him, so like your head's down a little. And me and the kid both push forward. They're down a goal. So he's trying to, like, score before the game's over because we're uh-huh. only up by one. And we just run right into each other's heads. Mm. And I'm just like, oh, oh you got to be kidding me. Like, the season's starting in a month. And then I remember I went on a roller coaster, like, a month later. And I, my, I was like, this is probably so dumb. I was like, I feel like something's wrong still. Because I, I just kept going. I told everyone, this is the worst thing you can do if you have one or you think you have one. Not tell anyone. Because I'm sitting on this roller coaster, and I'm at Six Flags all day riding these things, and my head is pounding. That's – wait, how many how many days after your concussion uh, are you going to Six weeks. Flags? Probably a couple weeks. But I didn't say – So you go to a thing. roller coaster park right after uh, – oh, okay, so a couple weeks. Okay. I didn't even think I had one, though. I just kind of – it's also a mental game. Like, you tell yourself that, like, nothing's wrong. And you're just trying to – because you don't want to be – You don't want to be hurt. I get and that. You, you don't – so anyway – I get – so that happens. I go to a roller coaster. I have a huge headache. So like a month later – because if you don't treat a concussion, if you don't do the right things to make it go away, it's not going to go away. Or it, it'll be like maybe not as bad, but it'll come back. So like a month later with the Iowa State game and that happens, and I just whiplash hit my head, and I'm just like, oh, shit. And I end up missing the next three months. So Ooh. Yeah. So that was like when I realized you got to chill. And the crazy thing is, is like every concussion I've got, because I'm a skill guy and I don't, I don't, I, I, shy, I, I don't shy away from hits, but I'm quick. I'm speedy. So bigger guys, it's harder to hit me. Uh-huh. That's just my game. So I've never had a concussion. I've had one where I got hit like real hard and it was my fault. I shouldn't have had my head down or whatever. But like every other one has just been innocent and it just happened. So anyway, this hat lasted for three months. I'm like a month and a half into it, and my head's still hurting, but it's starting to go away. So you have to like wait a week without headaches before you can even try to skate. So I had like a week and a half, no headaches, and I go to practice, and I'm feeling good. And then I come back the next day, and, man, my head just starts hurting. And I go sit on the bench. I'm seeing stars again. I'm like, Jesus. And then I go to our like doctor, and he's like – our team doctor, and he's like, yeah, you might need to go to therapy for it. So they have, like, cognitive therapy, which is, like, mind games. They'll have you on a computer, and, like, you're, like, you have to memorize shit. And, and so I was good at all those. I, the whole time, nothing was wrong with that. Then I had physical therapy for it, for, like, balance and shit. They're, like, all right. So they're, like, um, stand up on one leg. I was, like, I did it. Fine. They're, like, all right. Now stand up on one leg and close your eyes. Was, they had two metal poles on each side of me uh-huh. so I could grab onto if I was falling. Dude, I closed my eyes. I have one, both feet on the ground still. I lift one up. I shit you not. Two seconds later, I'm like going like this, and I couldn't even stand up straight. Were and they testing for like side to side balance? It's balance. So it's just like if you get a concussion, it, I, I'm not sure what they said it was, but it can like disrupt something in your head that like keeps you balanced. So that's what the big problem was with me was is I was really. Fast. I actually know what this is because yeah. it's psycho- cerebellum. Yep, that's it. That's yeah. It. Okay. So um, I was. So this was what was also scaring me is like with hockey, I've always been a great skater. I've always been the fastest guy. Like, and I couldn't stand up for my life. I couldn't keep balance. Still, I was like, something is not right. Like, I don't fall down when I skate. Uh-huh. And every practice, I was falling down all. Especially the time. being a skilled player, yeah. you're probably very good on your feet. And I was just like, what is going on? And then they're like, yep, this is what's been messing with you. And uh, so, I came back from that like. I, I finished the season. I only got to play like five games the rest of the year. I didn't do much. But since then, I've been lights out. I've been right back to where I was. So that's definitely, I'd say, like mentally the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life. 
just trying to like get myself back to normal because that's not the tip of the iceberg. Like, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Like the therapy shit. It's like that. I'm not a guy who gets depressed often. I, like, I don't get sad about shit just for no reason. And I'm not dogging anyone who does. Like I know uh-huh. that's a real problem. I know people who have that problem. You're right. Just, you're just identifying that yeah, it's not a part of who you are. That's not a problem for me. Absolutely. I, but man, I was getting down. Really? Like, bad. It, that, that, that happens. Like people get down. Like, that's what a uh, side effect of the uh, 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 concussions is like de- pretty bad depression, like just laying in a room, not wanting to do anything. Do you think it's cognitive or do you think it's because he felt powerless? Um, I think it's partly something I don't know. And I think it's partly not being able to do what you want to be doing and being locked away in a room. And and like I've been like, say you've been working out and you're like feeling real good about your body. And then for three months straight, you just can't. Cause I was, I it's like all that progress yeah, for nothing. I've been, I was the strongest I'd ever been in my life at that point. And it just, and I think I still had a concussion when it happened. I think that's what really messed me up. I think I still had one and it's just like all this progress. I was working out. I was stronger than I'd ever been in my life. And then it's just three months of like barely doing anything, wearing mm. sunglasses to class, wearing sunglasses everywhere I drive, not being able to listen to music loud, like everything. Uh. And it's just like, it's like everything you do, it's like revolves around it. And you're just like, ah, I just want this to be over with. What, and, what exactly is a concussion? Because my understanding of what a concussion is, and critique me on this, because yeah. you probably have a better understanding because I've never, Yeah. there's one time I maybe had it, but it wasn't diagnosed. I'm not 100% certain yeah. if I had it or not. I, I pretty, Long story short, I was uh, on a lake, as they always tell you not to do. <laughs> but I, I was out on a lake, and there was like so, some solidified ice on the surface, so I was walking around on it, yeah. and I slipped. So my feet like slipped out from underneath me, and I landed. Sh- like Most of the impact was absorbed upon my head. So I, I, I take all of that on my fucking head, and at that point, I, um, I I remember coming back and just being kind of ditzy. I yeah. was like, "Who are you? What are you?" And <laughs> yeah, like, like I was like, one. I was like, I, I had a hard time remembering certain things, but I don't remember any side effects in the long term. Like after that, I mean, I am pretty stupid, but <laughs> <laughs> so am I. <laughs> but um, no, in the short term, like like for the rest, uh, probably for like an hour or two, yeah. I remember, and then, again going back to memory like how well is my memory serving me right now but i uh my i feel like i feel like i had some in the short term but don't remember anything for like the long term or like medium to long term um so if you want to get down to like the technicalities of it what it actually is is like so your brain's obviously it's really bizarre your brain sits in your skull pretty loosely like it's not like it's obviously attached it's in your skull it's attached <laughs> it's, to shit. Uh, oh like, uh, yeah. i don't know that would be like one of like you know, just, your head is so uh, fragile. <laughs> it's, it's what's scary is we're not compared to like things on the earth. We could get hurt very easily. Like we are not big by any means. So what it is is like your brain is really fragile. So when you get hit, yeah, cool. when you get hit, um, you're it's so what a concussion is. It's your brain moving. It's like trauma on your brain. So it's like your brain naturally moves. Like you can honestly feel it. It's weird. But if you like you move your head back and forth, you can feel your brain moving if you really think about it. Like it's try it. I'm not kidding. <laughs> like just go. I actually I, I don't really want to because yeah, I'm gonna scary. feel weirded it's, out. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's I think he, I, I get what you're saying because I uh, I went to an EDM concert one time <laughs> and I like was headbanging the yeah. whole night. Which by the way, I've never had such a sore neck. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the back of my neck, not necessarily like my traps, but like yeah. my actual neck, sore as fuck. But. But uh, I, I feel like I remember my brain literally, yeah. like, I could feel it. That is funny. It's, like, yeah. one of those things I, like, I, I, I could sense, but I've never had a conversation yeah. about it. So, like, <laughs> oh, wow. I have a lot of friends who are really into EDM. I don't, I'm not, I just don't like that music very much, but I get why these people love these festivals. Like, these things, uh, my, one of my buddies from my hockey team just got really into it. And he was showing me these videos. Like, I can see why people get so into these concerts. Like, it's fun. It's an experience you're never going to forget. And it's crazy. I mean, obviously, everyone's on drugs and shit. That's that's why I don't go to them. I'm not going to – I'm not big on those drugs. But it's just like um, 
it's just wild. But anyway, what a concussion is, it's just your brain moving too fast or like it could hit like this side of your skull or something. And it's just like, it's just your brain moving too fast and it's not supposed to and like getting rattled around and it like cause it's literally like a, it, some people get ba such bad concussions. I think it's like called a contusion in your brain where like your brain actually bruises and like, yeah. But it's what it is. It's just your brain gets too much movement or something like. That. I'm not an expert on this, but um, like too much movement or something, and you just uh, it's too much trauma, and you just you have you have side effects of it, just like anything else. Like say you sprain your ankle, you're gonna have side effects. Cause right. It's not supposed to happen. But um, yeah, concussions are scary, man. Because I I remember telling my parents I was like if because I've had a good amount of them. It's like if I get another one, I I'll be done. And I've been. And it, I've had to change my game in hockey for it. For How many have you had? Probably five, I think. I, I thought it was take. like seven. Uh, I don't know, about seven. I don't know. Give it, I've you, You're shit. close. You're I close probably, regardless. Yeah. I, and I, Dude, I know people who've had like 20, and they, they still start, kept playing. I'm like, dude, if I, if I got anywhere, like if I got another one, I only have a year left. If I got another one, I'm probably done. Like, I'm not going to – that's the rest of your life. And people want to – you want to be – That's I've, your career. Yeah. yeah that's everything. your mind. Your that is your – mental health. It's yes. everything. And it's like people want to be – and I've done it myself. I wanted to be tough, and I knew I had one, and i just keep playing because I didn't want to be done. I didn't want to, like, quit playing because I didn't want to look weak, first of all. And it's like no one's looking at you when you get a concussion, like, oh, you're weak, you're being a little bitch, like this and that. Like, people aren't looking at you like that, but it's like – They're you, seen as, like, unfortunate circumstances. Yeah. The people have a high level of empathy for it. It's like, yeah. oh, man. I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm yeah. sorry that happened. I'm so thankful but that it hasn't happened time, to me. You get in your own head and you're like, man, I've been out for a month and a half. These people probably think I'm a bitch. It's like, then that's another problem with it. You get in your own head. Like you want to be helping, but you're like, I got to help myself first. Like I'm not okay to be out there mm -hmm. and, and not even with hockey. Like with concussions are dangerous. Like I'd say that's one of the worst injuries you could possibly get just because it's affecting you. It's not just a physical, like a broken arm. Like that can heal. There's certain people who've killed themselves just because of like post like these football players, they're like looking for like um, reimbursement from the league because they're like I don't know if they're looking for reimbursement, but I think I've seen that on stories and stuff. But they're like, I've gone through so much trauma from this concussion my whole life, and there's people killing themselves because of it because mm -hmm. they are so depressed because they've gone through so much shit just from their head injury. Like when you get to a point, so that the. Let me get this right. The concussion causes depression. It can, like, if you, so, because it's it's brain, like your brain is like traumatized, and mm -hmm. it's not even that. It's just like it's not healthy for your brain. Your brain is being injured, right? Just like any other part of your body. But your brain is like what you need more than anything, other than your heart to live. Like, if your brain dead, who are you? You know what I mean? Yeah. What's your personality? What's your sense and of self? And people literally lose themselves. What are your opinions? What? Are, yeah. Wow. Right. That he, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. And that's why I told my parents. I was like, I don't want to. Like, trust me, I don't want to keep getting concussions. I was like, I, if I get another one, yeah, I probably will be done because I realize I'm not going. I'm I'm gonna be done with hockey after this year. Like, it's not that. It's important to me. Hockey is one of the biggest things in my life, but it's like it's not to the point where I'm going to risk the rest of my life for it. Done in the aspect like you won't play roller after college oh, oh, or no, do no. you think you'll play like like minimal Com risk? Competitively. Like competitively. Okay, absolutely. And and honestly, I can't even say I'd quit if I got another one right now cuz I feel super good about myself. Like mm -hmm. it hasn't affected me at all personally. It's just been something I got through it and then it was done and it was gone. But it's like Oh no! I would definitely keep playing. Like I'll, I'll play. I'm be playing beer league my whole life. <laughs> yeah, same. Like, as long same. as I can. Like with soccer, but yeah, yeah, same. Same thing. Which, by the way, it's so cool that we both play sports that yeah. you can play for the rest of your lives. Exactly. I mean, to some level of recreational. I mean, the the yeah. dynamic switches up for soccer. It's indoor soccer in comparison to outdoor. Yeah. Or you could. I get. You could probably even play like men's futsal leagues. I'm assuming. But um, and then hockey, you could play roller yeah. or whatever. And another thing but is, football, you, you yeah. can't really do yeah. that too much. I guess baseball, you could play like softball yeah, or softball something. League. And it, another thing is you just stay in contact with those people. Because if you didn't have that, you would never meet these people. Like they would be strangers. And I, it's just if I didn't meet some of the people I've met through my sport, I, I wouldn't be who I am. Can I ask you, uh, I don't know how your experience was with hockey growing up. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know necessarily how hockey works. Yeah. But 
I know with soccer, so you, you play club soccer, yeah. and then whenever you get to high school, you play on your high school team as well. So in the fall, you play for your high school team, yeah. and then the rest of the year, some summer, you take – I mean, summer you're pretty much off, but you're, you're still playing a little bit of club, yeah. but you're pretty much playing with your club team, and yeah. your club team's from, like, all over. And my experience was that my high school friends, they became really – like, I became really close with those guys, and yeah. they weren't even nearly as good as my club team – but we went to the same high school. We had a lot of topics to talk about, like a lot of different. Uh, we had a lot of were, mutual ground. Yeah, exactly. Versus club, like I, I probably played because I switched up teams a fair amount. I probably played with, I'd say, well over 150 people. Yeah, probably oh, something God. crazy like that. I don't even want to. And imagine. honestly, I don't, I don't keep up with like any of them. Yeah, man. like and that's any just of life, them. Though. And I, I really like. I always, I liked them, but I never got that close with my club team. Yeah. In comparison, in high school where I play the same, I play with the same. Yeah. However many, I, I mean, I, I probably play with a fair amount of guys in high school too, because all, all the years but are switching up. But you have up. your like collective group of like. And like, guys. I'm still pretty decent friends with them, and yeah. I, I, at, at the point in time when I was playing with them, I was way closer. Yeah. Like no comparison between my club team, and my high school team. So, uh, with hockey, it's kind of the same way with like what you're talking about, like with your high school friends. So my select team would have destroyed my high school team. It wouldn't even been close. Mm-hmm. But same. My friends from my high school are i was 10 times closer i was 10 times more passionate about hockey with them and i was 10 times more close with them and don't get me wrong i still why is that it's just the bond it's like you go to the same you see each you see each other every day you can talk about girls you can talk about drama what's going on at school this and that you always have something to talk about and it and with hockey though with the club team it was just like you see him at school as well i don't want to dog I, I didn't see any. I, I went to Duchenne. That was a pretty small school. It's like, but, I mean, you see your high school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All those guys all the time. But, like, with the club teams, it was just like, I don't know. Everyone was from different areas. Don't get me wrong. There's kids on my club teams I'll be good friends with the rest of my life, but nothing like what, like what you were saying, nothing like my high school buddies. And it's just, like, the hockey was ten times better. It was it, – the hockey itself was honestly – I wouldn't say more fun because at high school you get a bunch of fans and it's like we get a we we get 150 fans at a game and it's like we had a school full of 400 people maybe uh-huh. it's just so cool everyone's into it and it's just a better experience and honestly that's what got me out of hockey like not loving it so much was playing select hockey I'd be gone five days a week every other week and it was missing school missing out on parties and having fun and it just kind of burnt you out. But that was the problem with hockey and soccer. That's the difference. Is like there wasn't a season for club and then high school. It was your hockey season is like six months long. Mm-hmm. So your select season starts before your high school season and ends after your high school season. So oh, really? I had to miss so many high school games because of that. Oh, they're going on at the exact same time. And if I didn't play in these leagues with these select teams, I would not be nearly as good as I am now. But it was just like it was so draining. And you're a kid. Like, I was 14, 15, 16, and even 17 going out of town 10 times a year just to play hockey. And Same, like, yeah. Missing out on all these memories. Wow, 10. 10, that's a lot. Wow. Oh, yeah, man. I, I Like, we go out. I, I don't was, know if I went out that much, but it was it was a lot. But, yeah, yeah that's, we, that's we a lot. We were out of town all the time, and it was for extended amounts of time. And you're just like. I do remember that, like, it, it, making plans with people on the weekends. And that's probably why I was I was the same way. I didn't party a lot of high school. When I did, I went kind of wild. But oh yeah. But um, I didn't I didn't I didn't um party like you know some people like they don't have like that sport. They don't have that main purpose yeah. to where they they can spend their free time doing that. Yeah. And um, I don't even know where I was going with that actually. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me so much, dude. I'll just be sitting there talking about something with someone. And I'll just be sitting there like, yeah, and rattling everything off. And then I'll get to a dead point, And I'm just like, what was I going to say? Same. <laughs> like, to be honest, I have to piss like yeah, so bad. It. And it's like it's like taking up part of my attention you know right what? now. I'll do the same. Okay. Gonna, I'll we'll just take a bathroom you. break yeah, real quick. For sure. It, it's just going to be like quiet on the pod. Is that that's fine with fine. you? That's okay. Fine. I don't I don't really edit these. So. I got to piss back. Right, cool. <laughs> Honestly, I might just go in this drain. Okay. Hold you take bathroom. I'll take the drain. I'm gonna take this hoodie off. Yeah. It's getting hot as shit. I've never peed in this drain before. <laughs> I peed in my own drain. <laughs> I'm a pee in my own drain. <laughs> Public 
Just the announcement is real. Here we go. I'm back. I'm back. Travis isn't back yet, but wow, he was quick. He was quick. I can hear his footsteps right now. He's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. Enjoy this. Wow, you were quick. Oh yeah. You got business to attend. Exactly. Did you, did you run up the stairs? Oh no. <laughs> I'm always just kind of speedy with it. <laughs> I, I've noticed I've run upstairs, but I walk down them. Yeah. For the most part. Probably smart. <laughs> Some dangerous things can happen on stairs. Yeah, right. Oh. Shit, it's already been like an hour. I feel like it's been like 15 minutes. <laughs> Wait, let me check the exact time. That's insane. Yeah, you're right. 55 minutes. <laughs> no way. That's what I always love asking people, like at the end. Like, yeah. how much time do you think has gone by? Yeah. And... Which, by the way, actually, I'll make my point at the end. But I, I'll be like, how much time do you think has gone by? And people will say 45 minutes. I'll be like, no, it's been like an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> and they're like, no way. I feel and, like we just like grazed the surface of what we're going to talk about. Today. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, I love that, though. I feel like there's something there to where you lose yourself in the moment so much to where like you're enjoying this experience. Yeah. There's something there, right? And I feel like you just lose sense of time. I feel like that's part. I, like that's what makes life so great is like when you have moments where you're like holy shit where'd the time go and it's like you don't ha you're not you're not feeling like the days just slowly going by you're like damn that and the thing is honestly what a big part of it for me is when i'm not on my phone when i'm not looking at my phone that's when the time flies by i keep burping right <laughs> now you're fine <laughs> These Heinekens are good. That's man. a that's a good point. That's a good point. I honestly, honest to God, I, this is so bizarre coming from me because I'm an IT. I hate cell phones. I hate them. I really? think they're. I love them for what they're good for, but I think they cause so much bad. Not just cell phones, social media, like Twitter, Instagram. Uh, not. I mean, Instagram's not that bad. People are just posting pictures, but. The problem with Instagram is like people try to make their lives seem to be everything like so great and all this and that, which is great. That's the though. epitome of of the flaws of social and media. If Instagram. If you're using it right though, and you're posting things that actually make you happy, and you're not doing it to put on an image for somebody else, mm -hmm. that's what it's meant for for me. Like, I post things on Instagram because. Like this made me happy in the moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there for the world to see because documentation. Like, yeah, documentation for me. But I feel like there's so many people that go on Instagram and use it to make other like they feed off the likes. Like they love seeing oh and everyone has dopamine. Everyone scrolls through and sees uh -huh. the likes. They're like, Oh hell yeah. But like I feel like there's some people that feed off of it and they're like, Oh, I need more. Like I'm gonna go post this picture. And what's worse is like these people who will post pictures and like edit their bodies. Or get fake likes. It's like, what? What are you? What are you doing that for? Why do you need so much satisfaction? You need to see that number rising up that bad. It's like I don't get the point. It's like, and, and it's different. Say like you're doing a podcast, or you're like someone famous, and your numbers are going up. It's like, yeah, it's gonna happen naturally. But to try to do it unnaturally to make yourself feel better about yourself, I feel like that is so unhealthy. And it's that that's the parts of social media I don't like. It's like. This is bringing out the worst in some people. Mm -hmm. As you don't know how to control it, it's like, and my problem with social media personally is I catch myself just clicking it so often. And it's like, I just opened this five minutes ago. There's nothing else there. Like, why are you doing that? And that's my problem with it personally. I don't have a problem with like me posting things like wanting more likes, wanting this or that. It's just like, I look at it too much. That's what I don't like. About That's my it. problem as well. Yeah. I, it's like, why am I constantly scrolling through this? I've looked at it all day long and it's like, but I, I think it's a way bigger level when it comes to people editing their bodies and like trying to look better for other people. It's like, fuck everyone else. 
that doesn't matter. I agree. Like you're gonna at the end of the day, at the best case scenario, you're gonna wind up with someone you love. You're hopefully gonna start a family. That's what I look at. Is like when you're older, who gives a shit about social media other than documentation? Of I'm your really life? curious as well. I'm really I I think about it long term as well. Like you think these people are gonna give a shit about you? Like no, not to sound like bad or mean or like. These people have their own lives. They don't care. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. At least me personally, I'm not trying to sound mean to people. I'm like, like friends with or this and that. It's like, you're the you're the longer your life goes on, the less and less people you're gonna talk to, and that's just life. And it, it's just how it works. People get closer with certain people, and it's nothing like against anyone else. You're always gonna know these people. They're always gonna be like, you're not gonna have anything against them, but you're not gonna. If you're searching for that, like it's gonna cause problems, mm -hmm. and it's just I don't, I don't know. But you're not gonna get rid of it either. And I think there's so many good things about it too, that I don't want it gone. But it's just like I wish it could be perfect, but it can't. I'm really curious about the evolution of it. Yeah, like you yeah. said, I I really pondered that thought of ten years from now, fifteen years We're from still now. In the beginning how are we going it. to use this? Yeah. How are we gonna use these platforms? Because there are gonna be some people that just don't get on them at all. And I think Twitter's They're gonna, the worst. I you think, think so? Twitter is the worst social media platform because, I mean, you got these people who will get hundreds and thousands of retweets on something that someone might have posted that was factually correct, but someone doesn't like to hear it, so they just belittle this person, and then and it gets hundreds of thousands of retweets and favorites, and everyone's looking at, oh, I don't want to be that guy, I don't want to be him looking like an idiot for thinking uh -huh. that way, and then you just shut up. And then you just don't say anything about it. And this people keep getting these favorites and retweets and it comes a norm. And it's like, if you think and literally, I do think there's a mob on Twitter. It's like, if you don't conform to how they think and how they like things, it's like, you are going to be ostracized and you are going to get ridiculed. People are nasty on that website. Like if you ever scroll through the comments, it's like, Oh my God, these people are ruthless to each other. Uh -huh. That's why I keep my opinions to myself. I don't need anyone's confirmation of what I think is right or wrong. Like I'm an individual. I don't need to think like everyone else. That's, that's probably my biggest problem with Twitter is people can form. And if you don't think this way, you're wrong and you're an asshole and you're, you're going to be ostracized because fuck you. Literally. That's what it is. And if you disagree with the original post yeah. and the original post has, let's say 50,000 retweets. It's like, wow, 50,000 people felt strongly enough about yeah. this opinion that I disagree with to retweet it. Yeah. It's really, really easy to make the min the minority look like the majority. And another thing is— It's crazy. Like, like it, it, let's say, like, 10% of the population feels this way, yeah. but they feel, like, very strongly about that yeah. and strongly enough to, like, where they want to retweet it. And then you see that tweet, and you're like, well, does everybody think that? D yeah. Is this, like, a popular opinion? And it's like, no. Or are people just trying to be cool? Like, Yeah, that too. You don't know. And, and another thing is, you look at Twitter, and you're like, oh, you have 50,000 retweets on this, like 200, 300,000 favorites. It's like, that is a lot of fucking people. Because I remember looking at Twitter a few years back, and it's like, if you got 10,000 favorites or something, that was – it was like, whoa. But now it's like on a daily basis. You'll And even if it's just like something funny, you'll see one of like 400,000. You're like, wow, that's so many people. And then I think back. I'm like, well, wait a second. These people could be from anywhere over the – anywhere across the world. So 7 billion people. Or even if they're in the United States. Maybe it blew up over in Syria. Maybe yeah. they, they hit something. <laughs> they they like ah, – what's the word I'm looking for? They, they, uh, they tapped into something yeah. over in Syria. Yeah. And then in the United States, it's a super unpopular opinion. You're yeah. like, whoa, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Maybe you start to second guess yourself even. And then, but the main, like, what I was trying to get at is like. And pull the mic up a little bit closer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get, you get to like someone with 300,000 likes and you're like, oh my God, everyone thinks this way. They're so right. And then you think of the grand scale and you're like, it's 350, like just if this is an American thing, it's 300, say it's political, 350 million people in the country. You know what? 300,000 people really isn't that much, like, compared to everyone else. And it's like – and a lot of these kids are young kids our age and uh -huh. like people who look at Twitter all the time. Like, And it's just like – sometimes I agree with them. Like, a lot – I keep up on political shit. I'm not going to talk about it because I hate talking about it for real. Just – but, like, I keep up with it, and some of these big trends I agree with, and then some I don't. And it's just, like, that's where you kind of see, like, the norm or, like, the mob coming in. It's, like, p 
people are like technology is mobilizing people together. Like everyone's so far apart, but they're so close. So like you could not even know someone from California, but they retweeted this treat, tweet that you saw that you retweeted. And it's like, oh, you're kind of connected because you kind of feel the same way about this. And then it's just like a mob kind of and a mobs maybe a bad word for it. Like a maybe like a community because like, these people aren't all bad. It's like they could have good thoughts and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I maybe I disagree with it and I'm in the wrong, but no one knows. You know what I mean? That's a good point. Mob like, has like a negative interpretation. Like a, but I, 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 I get a community. Person. I like yeah. that. I like that. It's but just, I, I like mob too. Yeah. I, get, I get what you're saying with but both. But at the same time, like no, if it's a mob or community, it's still kind of scary. It's like everyone is trying to like conform and think in one way. It's like, no, you're all different people. No one's going to agree on everything. It's like just stop. Uh -huh. that's, that's why that's what scares me about social media and like i think it's really good but i just have seen so much negative shit and it's just like man you guys just really annoy me it's like if you guys these people that hate each other so much if you guys just met each other in person and talked about something other than what you don't like each other for uh -huh. you might become friends it's like i i just don't get it i think people are so shallow these days uh, but they find that uh the opposite of common ground. Yeah. They find that point of disagreement, and then they focus on that. Yeah. That's like the point of tension. And it's like that's who you are as a person. You can't be anyone else in what you said on Twitter. See, I, I, I take the latter, and I, I really do feel bold enough to say that this is the latter. I feel like the better way to look at it, like you just said, is – what are points that we can agree on? Yeah. And even if I disagree with somebody, we can like talk about what we agree on, and then also let's talk about what we disagree on. And why do you feel this way? Like, why Versus do you why do I feel this somebody? way? Why do you want to hate somebody? Like, what makes you feel good about yourself for putting someone down and hating? I'll them? say this. This is interesting. This is something I've noticed within myself, like yeah. somewhat recently. <laughs> Do you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is something I've noticed within myself, like somewhat recently. Yeah. So whenever I wake. And let's say, I, I don't know if you've had this experience, but you wake up and you're in a bad mood. Yeah. Oh. Just from the start of the day, yeah. you start yourself and you're like, I'm just, not in a good mood like, today. Fuck this. <laughs> I yeah. Go back to bed. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And there are times where I'm like quicker to respond aggressively, yeah. like unnecessary, unnecessarily aggressively to something that doesn't even need that doesn't even require conflict yeah and i'm like i'm quick to like jump the gun on that i think that's partly human nature just who we are i, I think it's a part of my upbringing because i i fought with my sister a lot yeah growing up so i was like i i i'm not scared of conflict at this point in time but i i've noticed this is an interesting topic like we were talking about siblings earlier but yeah. my sister um my sister and i like grew up like fighting a lot and I think it's shaped me into who I am a lot because I'm not scared of conflict but I've noticed at times where I'm like I'm ready to get get aggressive with people unnecessarily yeah. and that's like my initial response like mentally I don't I don't act on it most of the time yeah. but I'll, I'll be like and there were there were some times in high school where this manifested itself to where I would be like quick to jump the gun and I was I would always like I would if if I'm going to if it's going to be a competition of who can uh, what's like out 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 aggression yeah. out, ag out out like maybe out, out like wit someone and maybe I don't know possibly and not necessarily out wit but like out like out intimidate out, like, intimidate. Yeah. intimidate's a good word In, like I I always found a way to win that and. I've noticed in recent years, I'm like, that's not a part of who I am that I want to keep continuing yeah. on. So it's almost with like that being said, nature, though. it's, it definitely yeah, is. It definitely is. It's like, I, I have this, this part of me, this part of my being that I want to win and I want to be competitive and I will find a way to win. And I'm very aggressive when it comes to that. But in recent years, I've reconsidered that train of thought, and instead of responding with being like an asshole, I'll just be like, "Hey, like, how can how can I overcome this point of yeah. being aggressive? Because ultimately, this is a friend who really wants the best for me, and maybe they're just arguing their point of view, and I don't know, or maybe we just see a point of conflict. I've just gotten better with like being able to overcome." 
overcome these negative emotions I feel to somebody else for honestly no reason because I'm quick to jump the gun mentally, but I'm I've gotten better at actually acting on that. Yeah. Um, I, I, honestly, it's interesting. It's a really interesting thing to consider by yourself whenever you grow up, like fighting with somebody. You're yeah. in in a in a home of conflict, and I don't want to make my childhood no, sound no, like a place I, of like doesn't. people it, argue with their siblings. That's so normal. Like mm-hmm. I argued with my sister. Not like we never got like bad arguments. It was always petty stuff. But it was just like I've honestly to contrast your point. I think I grew up being way less aggressive and kind of grown into it a little more, but in a good way. Like I get aggressive when I need to be like when I, when something severely like actually messes with me, I'm like, yeah, this isn't right. I don't, I don't like this. So I get aggressive about it. But at the same time, I don't think it's good to be aggressive, but at the same time, again, I think you need to like realize when something's actually not right and you should be upset or disagree. Know, you yeah. got to be willing to disagree. You can't, you can't. Cause then you're, you're just, you're going to mindlessly acquiesce. You're going to be like a fucking pussy. You're going to be like a fucking in the face cyborg. of adversity. You're just going to, you're just going to, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll do what you say. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, and I know people like that, and it's like it's almost sad. It's like you gotta have a fucking backbone. Like there's like no, this goes back to the religion religion thing with Jesus. Like he wasn't a pussy. Like he was he would stand up to people. Like I remember a specific story in the Bible. I don't even know if he even fucking lived. I don't even know if things existed. But it's a good story. Uh-huh. He, he saw these people selling um like uh. Meth. <laughs> yeah, he was on a, yeah, he was selling meth. He was like, hey, let me give you some of that. <laughs> no, but he was like. In the body of Christ. <laughs> Shoot it up my veins. No, I feel like I'm going to hell now. <laughs> but, uh, so. Uh, let me get some of that meth for a real one. <laughs> but, <laughs> let me electrify this beard. <laughs> stop. I make water into wine. Ain't meth, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make water into meth. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so he like flipped these tables and shit because these people were doing some fucked up shit. And it's like he had a backbone. He was like, "All right, you guys piss me the fuck off. I'm gonna show you what's up. Like, don't don't mess around." And that's what I think is good. For the most part, I'm laid back and I don't want. I I don't like fighting. I don't like getting into. Sh- it makes fights make me uncomfortable. It's like I don't want to have bad blood with someone. I want everyone I meet. To be like, I want to be cool with them, but I know that's not going to happen. But not being scared of conflict. Exactly. I know that I'm not going to get along with everyone, and I know that not everyone's going to like me. So I, you got to have that backbone and that natural instinct. See, with me, I always have, no matter where I am, I always am looking over my shoulder. I always am like on edge a little bit, not a lot, not like to a psycho point where I'm always like, <laughs> like I'm always like freaking out. Like, yeah. <laughs> Who's over there? Who's over there? <laughs> but I'm like, I'm sounds always, like you're a meth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> meth. But it's like. <laughs> It's like you always got to, like, watch out for yourself and know that not everyone's here for, like, not everyone's a good person. Like, no matter how bad you want someone to be a good person, they're not. And you got always look out for yourself. And that's, like, this is so, like. It's, it's very easy to get caught in the trap of yeah. being naively friendly. And yeah. then whenever you get burnt, yeah, then you become distrusting of everybody. And that's why I always, I don't really trust anyone until i know them and i don't there's a lot of people that i can know and i don't have to put trust into them like i don't have to i'm i'm close with you i'm your good friend but you're not like my best friend you're not like super close to me but you're still i consider you a friend so i really don't need to put trust into you but maybe um, like a certain level of trust like i I trust you to drive me from this location to another like i'm trusting you with my life right now yeah but I also I'm dr- I'm trusting your driving capabilities. But when it comes to like personal shit, like shit, are you gonna people, screw me over on this? I, I I'm like friends with a lot of people, but they, honest to God, don't know nothing about me. Like they don't know anything about me personally. So it's like I really don't have to put any trust into you, because I obviously like what you're saying about trusting someone to get me home safe. Like yeah, I I put trust. Like there's always a certain amount of trust you gotta put into someone. But I'm talking about like people you're close with like really close with right those are the only people that i really trust to like say like my someone in my family did me wrong 
I have so much trust in my family just because we've always been so close. If that were to ever happen, I don't, I would be fucked up just because I have so much trust in my family that it's just like, that's when it would be a problem for me. Right. But if we're talking about even people I know really well that I see on a daily basis, like you don't, you still don't know anything about me just because I don't like telling people a whole lot about myself if they don't need to know. And it's like, I reserve that for certain people. But like trust is is weird because I've broken people's trust and it sucks and it's like absolutely and it's like you don't want to do that to someone and you and like it, when you've done it but it, that's where I'm like confident in myself too because I don't let it tear me apart like I have but I've always gotten over it and through it and don't stress about it because I mean at the end of the day everyone fucks up everyone makes mistakes that they wish they could take back and it's like why beat yourself up over that shit and it's like but at the same time watch who you put your trust in because they could fuck you over and you don't want to feel that way, but you know, it's going to happen at some point. Absolutely. You can always, you, and I just feel like that's something about, that's a big thing for like personal strength. If you know who you are, you know who to put your trust in, you know, that there's certain people you don't need to tell things to, but they can still be really close to you. Like that's a big thing for me. People always act like they get, super close with friends and this and that and they have to put all their trust in them and like oh you broke my trust if something goes wrong it's like fuck no like, you don't have to give everyone to every like give every part of yourself to everyone you don't it's have gonna, to do it's that it's going to result in you feeling very yeah. very distrusting yeah. honestly because it's going to be broken at some point in time unfortunately yeah it's that's gonna the be unfortunate broken. truth of the world we live in and that's part of growing up that honestly i feel like that's when you turn into yourself is when you actually hurt really bad for the first time and like it's because of someone else and it's like wow that person just fucked me up and it's like and it, uh, to be honest, God, it's about girls. Like for the well, for me, unless same. Unless, no, no, yeah. same. I, yeah. That's where my mind went. Whenever yeah. you're referencing that, exactly. That's same. And that's what it is for the most part. Because I mean, this sounds shallow, but if you're a guy and you have guy friends, you don't really get into that much shit with your guy friends. And if you do, you either fight them or you get over it and you are good the next day. Guys have a weird way of handling conflict, but I agree. I agree. And I, I think it's part of it's very rare. I too. think guys are dumb. I really do. I think myself, I'm dumb, like not in a bad way. <laughs> it's just like, not in a bad way, not to make guys feel like, like idiots or anything. It's just like guys, I feel like they're, they're like, they hang on to something and then it's gone. And it's like the next day you're like, oh, I don't even fucking care. It's like, I'm just going to go out into the world. <laughs> I think I honestly think girls like mentally are smarter than guys and have like they're smarter in a different way. Yeah, and, and I, I think can't put ways, my finger on what it is exactly, right. but I agree with you. It's, I, I think agree it's attention with span. I really do. I think it's like attention to detail. It's like I because uh, yes. I definitely like there's things like with my girl. I'll be like, she'll like, are you even fucking listening to me? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like my my fucking head drifted off for a second. I'm sorry. Like, and it's just like little things like that. I feel like girls are so attentive to like attention like they sorry i'm fucking up my words they put so much attention into detail and like even little things just like uh like i don't even know but it's just little things and like when you see a guy there's like uh what like what'd you just say (laughs) Uh huh and they're just like are you fucking kidding me it's like i'm sorry i know (laughs) that's where i'm at now it's like if i do that i'm like i'm sorry (laughs) it's my bad That's funny. That's funny. And I agree. I agree. And that's, that's like, I feel like that's healthy to like realize that about yourself. Like it's not, it doesn't mean you're a stupid person. It's just like, yeah, sorry. I zone out a lot more than you do. <laughs> that is super true. I feel like, uh, especially whenever I'm in like these, co- like these podcast settings, I'm very attentive. Yeah. But in my personal life, I'm not nearly as attentive, no. especially with females. Cause I mean, they'll be talking about something that I just don't care about. I'm like, mm. I, yeah. just, I just start to zone out or I'll be on my phone or and it's not even that for me it's just like my brain is always thinking about something like I'm a very creative person like with music and write I used to write I still do write honestly a lot more than I have in years I've wrote more in the past month than I have in the past five years but when I was a kid dude I wrote like a 150 page book when I was like in eighth grade really yeah and it was just like just because I love fiction. I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh yeah. And oh, it's nice. like something I never really told people. Cause I'm, I'm like, 
I'm in a business major. Like I'm very, I can't remember which right side or left side of the brain is the creative one, but it I, is the right side. The right is the creative one. Yes. Okay. I feel like I have both of them like merged somehow because I'm so creative with that shit. I'm always thinking about like stories in my head that I could make or like a song that I could write. Cause I like making music just for fun. And it's just like, I get, I get in that zone, but at the same time, I want to make money. I want to, I want to have a job. Like uh -huh. I want to do something the better, like the business world. So everyone's always like saying like you, you're either right brain or left brain. It's like, I feel like I got a little bit of both. It's too binary. Like, it's like, just like extrovert, introvert. Yeah. It's like, are you extrovert or introvert? It's like, mm, I'm actually a little bit of both. I don't even, a little bit of both. Stupid. That's stupid. I, I kind of forgot what that meant. You know, I would agree with you. No, no. Uh, so introverts more like reserved, yeah. more reserved, more so, stay to yourself. Exactly, dude. Uh, okay. And then extroverts, like you get energy from yeah. other individuals. See, that's another thing. I feel like those emerge too. Because I like you. Sometimes... There's no way you're 100 percent of one or 100 yeah. percent of the other. Everybody's a. Excuse me. Everybody's yeah, a little fuck, bit dude, of each. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Right. Unacceptable. <laughs> Unacceptable. This is a fucking. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. The sound quality. <laughs> what the fuck? But no, uh, I feel the same way, man. I feel like I'm. I feel very confident in my left and right side brain. I feel very confident in being like I'm yeah. introverted to an extent, but I'm primarily extroverted. I would say. And uh, yeah, I definitely say that too. Like, um, I I like being around people. Do you know what? I can't say that. I literally feel like I'm 50-50 because there's days where I don't want to see anyone. It's like I just want to hang out and it's nothing. I'm not not because I'm sad, not because I'm like depressed or stressed out. It's like I just want to sit here and hang out with myself. Like I Absolutely. like being alone and I don't want anyone to feel like, oh, you're being a bum. Like why don't you come do something with us? It's like no, I just want to chill. Like I, I like time with myself. And then there's also times where I'm like let's fucking go. Let's go get drunk or let's go drink some beers or something. It's like – I look at these things and people are like, you're either left or right brain. You're an extrovert or introvert. I'm like, no, I, I don't. It's I really too don't, binary. I don't think so. Too binary. And I, I, I think that's almost manipulative and like brainwashing someone and saying you're this kind of person or you're this kind of person. Like, no, you're. That's a good point because if, if you if you identify with a certain type, yeah, and you fit that extreme you tell of yourself that that's person, what you are. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm an extrovert. Okay, I need to start yeah. seeing people all the time. I need to start seeing people all the time. And I mean, that can work positively. Like, for example, my this is actually kind of cool. My mom, I remember at one point in my life, my mom told me, she's like, you're very honest. Yeah, you are so honest for like and for like years later, I would like always hold myself to that standard. I'm yeah. like, OK, like I'm honest. I'm an honest person because that's a, that has a, and my point is that that holds a lot of power Yeah. that somebody else identifies you as a certain characteristic, a certain trait, Especially when it's your a certain behavioral pattern. And they say, you are this. And yeah. it's like, okay. And then you start to act that out. It's like, Oh, I have an opportunity right now to be dishonest or I can be honest. And especially I can keep it real or I can, or I can be deceptive. Fake, yeah. And at that point, you you kind of you like those words of my mom saying, "Hey, you're actually you're a really honest person." That yeah. it it gets like ringed back in my head. I'm like, "Oh, I'm an honest person, so therefore I'm gonna act as an honest individual." And when it comes from your mom, it's like, "That's your fucking mom. You came out of her belly, dude." Like, it's like when your parents tell you something, that's when you believe it. So like that's at least for me anyway. Same. When my parents tell me something, I believe it. Like my mom always will tell me like you're such a sweet kid. Like cuz I always treat everyone with respect and then and yeah, you're right. Like with what you're saying, you're like, "Oh yeah, she said that's how I am." So like when I'm around people now, it's like I do realize I treat people with respect no matter who it is. Like I'm respectful of like if I'm at a friend, well I'm I guess I'm, it sticks with you more. Yeah, and I guess I'm kind of on my own more now. I'm not really like in high school going to someone's house seeing their parents, but like it's like anyone I meet now, I always kind of keep that with me. Like you are a good person. You talk to people with respect. You never judge people right off the bat. You, and even if you are in your head a little bit, you can't really help that. But like you don't act on it and you give the people a chance and you you just talk to them. And I feel like I'm like, yeah, she is right. So when it comes from your parents, I feel like that's a big deal because your parents know you better than anyone. They literally watched you grow up from the second you were born. And they've been with you ever since until you like shit until I left for college. I was with my parents every day. Uh huh. I saw my parents every day unless I went out of town or stayed at someone's house. It's yeah. Like, you hold, you hold their opinion in higher oh, regard yeah. than if you just met somebody at a party and, and you're like, and, Hey, you're a really honest guy. It's like, thank you. Like, the, it's a, it's a compliment. Yeah. 
But whenever your parents tell you it, it's a it standard. It's, like, it's a standard. And what sucks is like maybe we were raised really good. There's people who, whose parents aren't like that and like they don't have that relationship with their parents. So it's like they could be listening to this and be like, well, fuck you. Like I don't have that from my parents. They tell me shit and I don't believe it. It's like, yeah, well, I, well I'm sorry, but that's just – it's different. It's – Everyone's raised different, and that is shitty. That is a city sh- shitty situation, but you got to find other ways to grow and other ways to believe in yourself because I'm not going to lie. My parents were a huge part in helping me grow because I, I resemble my dad How dare you? Yeah. What the f- <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, Travis? How dare you say your parents were a big part of who you are? <laughs> I'm not fucking sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're fucking beauties, though. <laughs> They're beauties. You know that word? Have you heard that term? Absolutely. Okay, good. I used to not make fun of you, but I would like reemphasize it <laughs> yeah. with you. Yeah. Dude. It probably came off like I was making fun of you. I'm like, hey, is this am I beauty? I, I texted <laughs> you one time. I don't remember what it was about. <laughs> I, I think like, hockey players have the I love it. Don't get me wrong, I love it, but we have the douchiest lingo, dude. <laughs> is it it was it I don't think it's douchey. From my perspective, it's kind of is cool, it douchey? douchey? I think it's awesome. I love it. Oh, try, that's what I'm saying. I love it. <laughs> I, I, t- I say a when I'm around. It's so a. funny. I won't say a around anyone, but like my fucking hockey team. When none of well, there's a few Canadians on our team, but like all of us are basically American. None of us are from the north, but we'll be like. <laughs> You had a nice night at the party last night, eh? <laughs> it's eh? just like, I'm not fucking Canadian. Like, why am I saying eh? It's like, there's no reason, but it's just how I, like, grown talking around them. Like, beauty. Like, we all have nicknames. Like, well, they call me Bart. I don't know fucking why. Oh, my. So, <laughs> I was in high school. We went on this trip. We had, like, an ex-NHL player coaching our team. And he was like, so I, I got to give everyone nicknames, and I'm just sitting here. I'm like, I don't really fucking have a nickname. Like, like, like people call me Trav. Like, I don't want to be called Trav, though. Like, that's what my mom calls me. And so I'm going around, and I'm like, I mean, I had a coach call me Bear one time, and he was like, nah, I don't like that. Barrett, he goes, well, go ahead and call you Bart. <laughs> and everyone that weekend started calling me Bart. So I Bart. get down here to Mo State. My first. Was like, that a big part of the hockey culture? Uh, like like nicknames? Oh yeah. It's oh huge. really? I don't call anyone on my team by their name. I I don't know if I've said a first name on any one of my team in the last four years. That is so fucking cool. It's like, fucking hilarious. That, I love culture within sports. It's it's hysterical. That's it's awesome. Just, like people come around us and they're like, "What the fuck are you guys saying?" It's like. It's like a different language. To baseball, me. baseball has the same thing. Yeah. Baseball has a lot of lingo as well. Yeah, but soccer like, doesn't. So Honestly, I, it doesn't. Yeah, that's something. Fine. That's what the sports lack like it, but that's why it's yeah. European. I I come. I, <laughs> so anyway, dude, I come down to Mo State my like first week, and like there's so there's junior hockey. So that's what that is. Is like you play high school, and then you go off somewhere to play. You don't go to school or anything. Uh-huh. So and then you come back to college. Like when you want to like actually start learning and like try to get a degree and so these kids like i'm 22 right now and i'm about to be a super senior and i'm still average age in the league so oh, wow. like, i came in there's like 23 24 year olds that are like juniors and seniors and so i'm pretty intimidated like i'm coming straight from high school i just made this team and i get in the locker room <laughs> this is hysterical they're like there's three questions first of all what's your nickname Second of all, where'd you come from? Third of all, who's your favorite porn star? <laughs> and I'm just sitting here. I'm like the youngest kid. I'm where'd like, you come from? Yeah. What's your nickname? And who's your favorite porn star? <laughs> can favorite? I can I get the answer to all these? Oh fuck. All right. This is younger me though. I don't really watch my porn. <laughs> I hardly never actually. But anyway. Um, really? No. I really. I, I swear to God. Wow. I, just because I mean. The girl I'm with now is just like, well, you know her. I just don't want to mention her on here. But it's just like, no, I don't anymore at all. It's like I feel that. I. It's just like I don't get turned on by it. It's really weird. It's That's like almost a reason I know I should be with her is because I don't get turned on by porn anymore at all. Really? No. It's just weird. That's beautiful. Yeah, dude. That's what that's I'm saying. That's really interesting. I I've know. never heard this before. I, I swear to God. It's, it's just, just like weird. And like – but anyway, so uh, isn't that bizarre? Really? Because I – wow. Dude, I don't want to sound like a freak on this podcast, but, like, I've watched a good amount of porn in my life. And yeah, no, like, no. I've, I've watched too to, much. To have too it, much. To have it, I'm 23 years yeah. old. I've watched too much porn. Yeah. And to have it just, like, abruptly stop like that, it's just like, 
this must mean something. But y- you just lost interest. Yeah. It's like I don't even want to look at that it. That is incredible. Because it's like they I don't look at them like I look at – and it's fake. It's like – Oh, it's still fake. It's I, no, fake. I analyze the fuck out of porn. I'm yeah. like – they're faking that. Uh, faking. They're yeah, faking, faking the reaction to the the. Uh, that's, like, that's not how it whatever, is. Whatever, whatever, whatever sensation they're feeling down there, they're faking it. They're faking yeah. it, and I feel like it's. I feel like oh, like if you ever see like two girls and one guy. Yeah. I feel like it's like they're pretty much just like working as a team to yeah. make the guy come. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, like it, that's all porn is. It seems like the girl's just doing it's everything business, she can. Dude. To make the guy come, Porn like, cause then as soon as he comes, that's the end of her. Oh, like, that's when she clocks out. Yeah. Oh, you know? oh, I just made that fucking cash. Let's go. Let's exactly. Like, I, and it's, it's just that's the end of her work day. It's just fucking stupid. Porn is stupid. It's stupid, <laughs> but I you love go it. Look at these titles. I hate that I like, love it, but I love it, <laughs> dude. No, they go look at these titles. It's like. <laughs> Kid on summer break sees mom over the fence. And <laughs> fucks her. It's like, it's like what? <laughs> <laughs> or like <gasps> some crazy like cheating stories. Like you are a fucked up. No, you no, <laughs> step brother, yeah. step or step Leaks sister in. meets step brother <laughs> and gets big Gertha. <laughs> like, I, w- ever, what are you saying? Have you ever gone and looked at gets like, dominated on like Pornhub or something? You go look at the comments. <laughs> it'll be some dude who'll be like, subscribe to Pew- PewDiePie. <laughs> 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 it's like, see, people make a big joke out of it. It's like, it's, this is fake. And it's just so funny. But, oh, back It's to acting. Back. It's like a form of acting oh, and entertainment it's in a, it's sex. A, it's a business. Like, in sex. Like, the most biological, fundamental yeah. thing to human beings. I mean, just it. reproduction as a whole yeah. is like life as a whole, and they've made a business and they've made a form of entertainment out Dude, of it. I saw a tweet the other day. It was like, I hate that I get off to it. I hate it. Yeah, it's weird, but it's like it's life though. But I saw a tweet the other day. It was like, good thing if the internet or like if if porn if they ever stop making porn, it would suck. But we'd have videos for the next thousands of years <laughs> just because of how many videos are on the internet now. It's like. You would you could never go and watch it like it's it's fucked. I don't know. I think it's fucked. Like, like porn videos specifically, just or? like anything. Yeah, anything. And the, dude, the fact of finding a girl that actually makes you step away from that, you're like, whoa. Like this is what it's actually supposed to be like. Yes. And you're, yes. Because like, I feel like that's another problem with porn is like people put these fantasies in their head that they can't like comprehend. Or, like they think that's what it's supposed to be like. It's like no, are you fucking kidding me? Like these people are acting. Like no one's gonna be that wild and. In respect annoying. to you for finding that, yeah, that's that's really beautiful thing because yeah. uh, there, there'd be some girls in my life yeah. that would be upset with me, but I haven't found that yet. I yeah. don't think I have. It is just like it's almost like, it's annoying. It's like shut up, bitch! Like you sound like you're faking it. Like this is not like this is stupid. <laughs> yeah, you you come off that way for yeah. sure. And, and then, <laughs> But anyway, do you mind if I do you want to share this last beer? It's just the last one. Yeah, yeah it's the sure. last one. You can have it, dude. I don't need it. Do I you not some, want it? No, I don't need it. I got some, I got them for both of us. I think I've had more than you anyway. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I think I've had my six already. I don't think I've had more than you. But um, I got some more Bud Lights back at home anyway. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, but back to what we were talking about. Uh, mm-hmm. so it was like the uh, where'd you come from? What's your nickname? And uh, who's your favorite porn star? So I'm sitting there and I'm like, uh, 18 okay. years old, 18, just, just fresh not, into college, just turned 18. And I'm with oh. like 22, 23, 24 year olds. Like they're all older than me. And these guys, I like, these that's guys are still like, I'm great friends with a lot of these guys still. Like one of them, I made music with him for a little. And like, we talk on a daily basis. I'm going to his wedding in a couple months. And it's just like, I'm so excited to like, I know I'm gonna be talking to him with my life. That's a good thing about social media. It's like I know I'll be talking to him for a good, good point. Of time. But, I agree. Uh, anyway, so I go. Um, so I'm from St. Peter's, Missouri. It's like because there are a lot of them are St. Louis County guys. So like they're a little. So they know the a area. More wealthy though, and it's so like it's St. Charles. It's weird with hockey. St. Charles County and St. Louis County always like kind of went at each other because St. Louis County always had the uh, Junior Blues and they were sick or whatever. And then there was our like AAA team. And but the because all that's those funny because St. St. Louis is like a lot better than St. Charles yeah. County yeah, in soccer, I mean, it too. Is. And it's, they, it's they like, would, I mean, they would fuck us up. St. Yeah. Charles is getting significantly better, but yeah. they, at the that's time, the they would fuck us up. And, and the thing is, what was funny about it is like to this day, it's like those kids are from St. Louis County, so like 
they hang out with each other when they go home and it's nothing against them it's like i don't want to drive 50 minutes to go downtown like, yeah i don't want right. to do that and it's like you're nothing against them i'm just not going to see them as much i'm going to see my boys more and that's the saint charles saint louis rift like that's how it is and it's not a rift it's not a bad thing it's just like you're going to see the people you're around more and um but anyway so i'm like i'm from uh, saint charles county like out in saint peter's um I mean, and so it got to the nickname, and I was like, I mean, I don't really have any. One of my coaches called me Bear. I got called Bart once, and this kid who's one of my good friends now to this day, he's sitting to the right of me. He's like 23 already at the time. He just goes and screams, Bart! And I've, I swear to God, I have not been called anything by anyone on my team unless they're a new guy than Bart since I've been here. I'm known as Bart down here. Like, That's no hilarious. No one calls me Travis, but, like, my roommates. And I like it because I've never really had a nickname. I've never been known uh -huh. by something other than Travis or Trav. So it's cool to me. It's like I like having a nickname. And it's, like, funny because it's Bart. It's, like, it's like, it's just a weird Where does nickname. Bart even come from? Barrett, I guess. Like, since my last name's Barrett. I see it. Yeah, Bart. It's just short. I don't know. So that's what I, I was, like, another thing. I was, like, confused. I was, like, why you guys call me Bart? <laughs> I was, like, I don't know. But, um. Well, I knew Barrett, it. Bart. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see it. I see yeah. it. People used to call me 50 Cal because my last name is Barrett. Uh -huh. So I was like, Barrett 50 Cal. I'm the 50 Cal for short. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I like it. I don't play COD much, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, you know, did you ever play COD? No. Really? Never really grew up playing it. No, I never got into like Neither video games I. too I much. Was, I sucked at them. So I was just like, I played Chell a lot. You know what Chell is. Yeah, I was the same way I played FIFA. Yeah. yeah. I, I played Chell a I like Chell. Chell is probably like, if I had to choose. My second favorite, like, Xbox, PS4 game, Yeah, it, it'd most likely be chill. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I can't even think. Grand Theft Auto. Actually, the, Grand Theft Auto would probably be my second favorite, but my third favorite, chill, for sure. Yeah, I've never just got into a game like crazy. I mean, I used to, like, play GameCube a lot. That's what I – see. I was like, Same. I, I, I was, like, the Xbox, older. I like the basic yeah. games. I, I, yeah, exactly. I loved, like, Xbox. I think Xbox is cool with the graphics and how high-tech the games are. But it's like N64, like GameCube, like those game, those systems were badass. Like they were so cool. They those were good enough, games, and they're easy to play. And like that, everyone was like competitive in it. And it was it was fun. Oh, like fucking uh, uh what was it? Mario Party? Did you, did you ever play that? I never played Mario Party. What? Yeah, right. You never played never. Mario Party? I was big on the Super Smash. That was Wait, are we talking? Are we talking GameCube or anything. are we talking 64? Dude, you've never played Mario Party? I played it. I don't remember so it was whatsoever. Like, it's, basically, it's a lot of like mini games, right? Yeah, dude. It's like so. It's like you have a. Uh, it's basically like a board game and a video game. So like you That's have cool. spots. So like, I love that. Every time you jump up and you like hit the die and it has a number and you go a certain amount of spots. Uh -huh. And then like once everyone goes their turn and each spot has like so most of them are blue and you get like oh three so you coins. take turns playing. Yeah. So, Everybody. Well, oh. no, no, no. You all you usually play the game. There's like mini games where it's like one person or two people. But like for the most part, everyone goes. So like there there'll be little red circles on the map and you go one by one by one. So there'll be red ones. Those are like my Minus three coins and the, most of them are blue and those are plus three and then there's like bowser circles like you have to battle bowser for something but like what's for, what's the ideal number of people to play with uh, for four four or, you could play with two but it's okay. two to four and then i think it could have been no i'm it's definitely four because n64 only had four slots yeah, yeah so uh so what you do once everyone rolled the die and got to their spot you would play a mini game, and whoever won would get points or like okay. coins. But there would also be stars in the game. So like, if you got to a certain point on a map, there'd be a star there. And if you got a star, that means say you have zero coins and someone else has like a hundred, but you have a star and they don't have one, you'd be in first place. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, it was like a like if you had more stars, you won. So you wanted to get all the stars in the game and win the. So you could win like maybe one or two mini. Well, no, you'd have to have the coins to buy the star. But, man, this is taking me back to my childhood. You'd have to have the <laughs> coins to buy the star. So if you didn't have enough, you'd have to pass it up. And that sucked because, like, if you had it, you'd be, like, winning. But then, like, you did have So the it's, coins. like, strategy within the game. Yeah. Obviously, like, you're playing the games, yeah. the little mini games. But then outside of the game, there's strategy as well. Yeah. So it's, like, two games going on. Basically. To one ultimate yeah. goal of winning. Yeah. Interesting. And and it sucks because there's really not games like that anymore. Everything's just kind of like as cool as you can. I don't know. I guess there are. I mean, 
I've just never been into the shooter games. Like, like Fortnite, I'm yeah, not. I, 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 I don't know what you I, feel about that. Mainly because I suck. I don't enjoy Fortnite just because I suck at it. I, I feel like I, can see I played it like, like it. three times and I've enjoyed it, but I've never like I've never gone out and yeah. just played it all it, the time. It gets your heart going, but like when you suck at it and like every I like time that. You it gets play, your heart going. <laughs> like, yeah, every time you open a map or like drop into a game and you get killed in like the first ten minutes, or you make it to like far and you have no kills, and then you see someone freak out and get shot. It's like people get bitches. <laughs> My friends love playing it. They play it all the time, and I'm just like, I don't want to play. I'm terrible. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't. Like, I'm I don't get terrible. it. Terrible. <laughs> But yeah, I just I'm not into shooter games really, just because I Same. I feel like it's because I'm like so like jumpy all the time. So like when I see someone, I like freak out with the controller and I start like hitting it real quick. I don't even know what I'm pressing, dude. I'm just hitting random shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's why I'm good at chill because it's a very like it's not slow it is slow plus you understand the strategy of hockey yeah. a lot more than yeah, like I would for example. That's a huge part of it too. It's just like. And it's just you don't have to make a, such quick movements, and it's like you know you're playing a game like the whole time, like it's a competitive game, and it's not like you're looking for someone. And once you see him, you gotta blow him off the fucking map. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> those games cracked me up though. When I'd get a kill, dude, I'd freak out. I'd be like, let's fucking go. Same. My my KD was so fucking oh. bad. <laughs> I don't even wanna bring it up. I'm not going to. <laughs> Honestly, I gotta piss so bad. Yeah, me too. Again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Another bathroom break. <laughs> It's funny how much your, like, attention gets taken away from, like, your attention gets taken away from the conversation a little bit. When like, I was, I was paying attention. I don't want to give you, like, the. No, I know. When you got to piss, that's all you can think about. Yes. I, I was, like, paying attention, but I'm like, oh, my God, I got to pee. I got to pee. I got to pee. All right, cool. I'm going to go pee. The same routine, or you want me to go this time? Ah, you can go upstairs. You were quick. Literally right behind this curtain, I was peeing. Right behind it. Wow, our battery's on halfway. It's probably on the lesser side of halfway, but it's halfway. It's like the representation of this battery is four bars, and it's on two bars right now, but I would guess it's on, as far as the second bar goes, it's probably on the lesser side of the second bar. But it's just hilarious to me that I was like peeing on the other side of this. The fact that I was, no, I was I was talking to the camera about like the fact that I am peeing on the other side of this curtain. Yeah. Like I, I mean, my dick was out literally <laughs> right there. There's literally a slivet right there. That's hilarious. I just think that's hilarious. How long we gone? Hour forty minutes. Do you want to keep going or yeah, it, it's up to you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. I didn't realize how late it got already. It's it's totally on your time. I, I work at eleven tomorrow, so oh, I'm not really? too stressed at about it. Yeah, at the OG. Yeah, I text her back. I, was like, <laughs> I, I looked at my That's... phone. I was like, damn, it's ten thirty. I was like, god damn. Yeah, right. <laughs> We've been good thing we started at the time because I was I was totally like, yeah, man. Dude, like whenever we were having the conversation upstairs, I wasn't really thinking about it too much. Dude, dude, something else I wanted to talk to you was Heath Ledger. Oh, oh, because we'll, we're yeah. gonna appreciate that on the same level. Because I've, I was thinking about. It, and I personally, I haven't seen a ton of movies, like a ton, a ton, but uh, I've seen a fair amount of movies. Yeah. And Heath Ledger might that might have been the best single performance I've Dude. ever seen out of anybody ever. And I'm upset that I, I find didn't, that to be incredible. I didn't get to experience that fully when I first saw that movie. I didn't understand acting at that point. So when I go back now and watch him in The Dark Knight, it is fucking insane. Like this, he literally died. Like he probably overdosed because of what he put himself through. He never got to see the final product of that movie. He never saw the movie all the way through. He locked himself in a hotel for 23 days 
and just tried to figure out what he wanted to do with the Joker. Because that's a huge that's role. That's beforehand. Yeah. That's a huge role before they even started filming. Like, And, like, people were already, like, um, talking him down, saying, oh, he's going to be shit. Like, Heath Ledger for the Joker, really? Like, and this is me looking this stuff just up a little while ago. And it's just, like, he... He t- looked at everyone and he said, fuck you. You know what? I'm going to literally take my life. What roles did he have before that? Uh, he was in Brokeback Mountain. It was with, um, uh, what the fuck? That's name? that's the two gay cowboys? Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, what's the guy's name? He's like one of my favorite fucking actors. Oh my God, I can't think of it. Uh, Wait, was he gay in real life? No, no. Uh, what wow, the hell? Is, this is kinda, I'm so upset with myself that I don't know this. Did he have to make out with the dude? Uh yeah, I think they definitely kissed in it. I haven't. Wow, seen interesting, it. interesting. That's that's a. That's honestly Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm I'm so mad. At I've myself. heard of that. I've heard of that. He's I don't know who that is. I'll show you a picture of him. You you'll know who he is. He's a he's my, oh Jake Gyllenhaal. This guy. Faces, he's my, faces. He's my favorite actor. Don't remember names. Faces. He's one of my favorite actors. Not my oh, favorite. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it's uh, funny. I was like, no way. I'm gonna know. Face yeah. To a name, yeah. And it's but. I just feel like, because he really wasn't in that many big-time movies. He was like, uh, and he wasn't in those kind of movies either. He wasn't in something like, so serious, like, why so serious? <laughs> but uh, he So people in, were critical of him yeah, playing? Yeah, before the movie came out, they were very critical, because there's other people, like other actors, I'm not sure who, that were up for it, that didn't get it. And they were very critical of it, because it's a Joker, it's Batman, it's like, that's a huge thing. That's a huge role. And and, and Christopher Nolan, what an unbelievable director, too. I right. Mean, I, almost all of his movies are fucking classics. Interstellar, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, uh, Inception, Memento. He's got so many movies. And He's then, up there. He's Dunkirk, he, have you seen Dunkirk? No. Oh my god, it's so good. Those He's are just, thinking movies. Uh, every They're single movie he movies. makes makes you wonder about life. I'm every j- I'm, single one. What a, who else would be like a Above him, as far as like uh, director wise, Steven for, Spielberg. For me, no, I mean Spielberg's kind of like he's more or of like, Spielberg. Okay, he, See, I don't know my directors too well. So he's not as like he's respected, but he's like more like big time budget movie, like Transformers, like big eye popping movies. Okay, Where absolutely. Chris for Nolan's more like depth, conceptual, like conceptual depth makes you think actually like movies that go above and beyond like mm. interstellar that's probably my top five movies all time interstellar is un- it's up there for me with, as well have you, okay you've seen it matthew mcconaughey and i matt i think matthew he's one of my favorite actors yeah, of all i think time he's kind well. of a douche but i love him i think he's like he fits that role perfectly he's got this confidence yeah. that i just love it's nice i, I like absolutely it. love it it's very very unique to him and people call and him a douche and it's like I don't I think he's a dude. Have no. you seen? Have you seen? What's that movie with him? He's old, he's a lot younger. He's significantly more like he's significantly younger. Oh, it's um, Dazed and Confused. I've never seen it. I, I know uh, it's a classic. I've never seen it. It's though. a it's a classic for all the weirdest reasons. I've seen the movie like probably ten times. Yeah. Right, maybe not that many, but I've seen it at least five times, and yeah. I love the movie. Yeah. And it's literally just these pe- like these high schoolers. It's like yeah, it's like a throwing, high school party, movie, throwing right? a party yeah. in like the woods. And that's that's all it is. But like Matthew McConaughey kills it, and yeah. he's he in that movie too. He's just got this this calmness. Which, by the way, I feel like calmness in its own way, as far as finding your masculinity goes, kind of like produces confidence. Yeah, it's his voice. It's like it's his soothing. Voice, it's so it's a cool voice. Like it's he sounds. That's why people call him a douche. Like in those Lincoln it's commercials. So, yeah. Have you ever seen those? He's like. He's just driving a car down the road. He's like, and the smoothness going 80 miles an hour feels like 20. And he's like, <laughs> like, shut the fuck up, dude. You're, so, you're, you're driving a Lincoln. Shut up. <laughs> and it's just like, I don't even know if he said shit like that. Oh, I if think, I had a company, I'd want him to represent oh, me. Oh, yeah. See, that's, I love it. Like, he's I, the man. I think he's a douchey. I think he's douchey too, but I think it's a good, like, douchey. It's like, you're the man. Like, <laughs> fuck yeah. He, he put out this It's video. that confidence. Sometimes he, people misrepresent dude, confidence yeah. for douchiness. You got to look. There's this video about him. It's like a speech on happiness. Uh-huh. It is the fuck. Like, I've seen it. And, yeah, I hate, like, for the most part, I don't like those, like, motivational videos and this and that but that one i was like that was really fucking cool like he actually sounded legit and i agree with everything he said like there's a lot of those i'm like um bullshit like is it it, wait i think i've seen it is it the one that he's like i compare myself to who i am like 10 years from now yeah yeah 
I, I love so. that. Yeah. I absolutely. It's, it's like nine. Was that like long. a college like, yeah. commencement speech yeah, or something so. like that? It's really cool. It's really interesting. And um, because I'm not really into those motivational videos, just because I like motivating myself. Like I feel like I can do that for myself. Uh-huh. And but I listened to that and I was like, damn, that was really fucking good. I was mm. like, he sounds like he like he's just an intelligent person. Like he's he's. When you're that famous, you do go through a lot. You see a lot of shit. You meet a lot of people that other people don't meet. Like me and you, I'm not saying we're little or like below anyone, but we are kind of confined to our group of people that we know. Whereas Absolutely. he is in Hollywood or wherever the fuck he is, and he gets to meet so-and-so or this person, that person. All these people from different walks of life, and we do too, but not to that scale. And right. It's just like you meet these people. And your your just mind is expanded so much. Just like say you meet someone from uh, someone in Europe, it's like your mind is immediately just expanded because you don't live in that culture and you don't live like they do. You live in Missouri. You I live, love that thought. Yeah, you live in Missouri. You're around these people. They kind of experience the same kind of thing you do, and it's just like like you once you're famous, you are going to meet people and you are going to be looked at higher than other people. And I honestly respect that. I think that's something that comes along with that. It's like you do have a higher platform than everyone else and use it to your advantage. Like you if you have use it to expand your mind. Yeah, exactly. If you have that power, fucking use it. Like make the most of it. Like are you, why wouldn't you? And I feel like most people do, but I feel like some. People I like that don't. thought. I like that thought a lot. Yeah. I, mean, I would. I would like to believe that I would use it for the same capabilities to be able to meet more interesting people. Yeah. That's that's that kind of how still. I feel with this podcast. Is I I, I kind of want to just, you know, just meet like hang on with my friends, yeah. but also like if I could be able to leverage this, hey, Go reach out to mind. some somebody else who's like, hey, I find you interesting. Yeah. I think you're a really cool person. Uh, for whatever reason, would you like to come on this yeah. podcast and have a conversation with me? Dude, and going back to the Heath Ledger, because that's what we started on. That is the most impressive acting job I've ever seen. I remember we watched that video a few weeks back about him getting thrown into that wall. You know the interrogation scene uh-huh. where Batman goes in there because he's not saying anything to Gordon. He's not. He's being an ass or whatever. And I, I didn't know this. I thought this was a special effect. Batman throws him into the wall and cracks the wall. They that was not planned. That was legit. He threw himself into that wall when Bat like uh, I, who was it playing Batman? It was um, what's it? Christian Bale? He throws him into the fucking wall, and the wall just splits and dents, and there's a fat crack going down it. That was not supposed to happen. <laughs> like that, he threw himself into that wall. That's insane. Like, and when he got his head slammed, I don't know if that was real, but shit, man, it's like. This guy put his life into this. He literally died before the movie came Could out. Could you imagine that? I I am convinced that he died because of that role. Because he was so fucked up in the head. Like, imagine locking yourself in a room for 22 days trying to be someone else. Trying to be a not just someone else, a psychopath. Personality disorder. Yeah. Just an absolute psychopath. Oops. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> and, um, like, it's just insane. And I think that's, that's why he's incredible. not here incredible. Because all his roles before that weren't that crazy. Like, it seemed like he was a normal guy. And then he just did that, and it was just boom. And I think... To think that... I mean, he he died right around that point. And like you said, he, he had never, never saw, the saw the movie. Never saw it. That is a national tragedy. Yeah. In my opinion, that is a national tragedy to think that somebody has never seen the movie that is just... So beautifully created. On IMDb, number four movie all time, it's ranked. Really? Behind Shawshank and Godfather and Godfather Part Two. I okay. I've never seen the Godfathers. I. I feel like I, I, I need to. I need to. And I, I who knows? I'll go on a binging weekend. Like yeah. people always say, like watch Star Wars on it's a hard, binging dude. weekend. I struggle with watch. older movies though. I struggle with. I would I, agree. And it, it, uh, Harry Potter is another one. People tell me to just binge, and I've tr- oh, I've actually tried. Don't get I've me tried. Started. I love Harry. Really, Potter, I've bro. tried on both read, of those, and I just can't fall in love with them like I read other people every do. Book twice. Unreal. Incredible. Oh. That's incredible, and I have a lot of respect for that. It's, but but with I that did being it when said, I was young, so it's I couldn't do that now. I could not mm-hmm. do that now. I can, I promise. But it's just like. When I was young, I was in that fantasy land, and it was just like, wow, this shit. I want it to be real, and it was like the movies were what made it real for me and i was like this is fucking awesome and but now when i grow up it sucks because i still love it but it's like it doesn't hit me like it used to when i see the movies it's just interesting yeah and 
and I feel like it's sad, but it's just me getting older, like my younger self. Because when you're younger, you believe in more shit. Like, fuck, you believe in Santa Claus and shit. Mm -hmm. Sorry if there's any kids and they still listen to <laughs> believe in Santa Claus. But it's like you believe in this shit. And then once you find out it's not real, it just kind of morphs you. And you're just like, well, what do I believe? It's, yeah, what do I believe? It's just like, I don't know anymore. The Christmas I found out about Santa Claus being real, I was being an asshole. I was being an <laughs> asshole on Christmas. Yeah. And I was being a stubborn little fucking kid. And my my dad pulled me aside. He's like, hey, Santa's not real. <laughs> and I was like, what? What? You fucking, what? Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> yeah. What did Santa's you Santa's not real? I'm going to write Santa right I've now. Because I've always been weird with, like, receiving gifts and, yeah. like, receiving, like, anything on Christmas. I'm like, hey, like, I take into consideration from a young age, like, a really young age, I, like, unusually so, that, hey – you're paying for this. You work for that money. Yeah. I don't deserve this. I, I always I always feel undeserving when people give me gifts. I'm weird about that. Yeah. But uh, with that being said, I I, I think I was just being kind of like stubborn because of that. Like mm -hmm. that was like an element of why. And my dad pulled me aside. He's like, hey, Santa's not real. Yeah. And I was like, cool. Okay. And then okay. I, I calmed down from that, that point when on. When I found out, I was like, <laughs> I kind of knew. I was just like, eh, all right. <laughs> I was like, sounds good. I didn't have a really a concept of money when I was that age. So like when I woke up on Christmas, I was still like, fuck yeah. But like now it's just like I realize it more. I'm like, don't fucking get me anything. Like, um, I don't need anything. I have clothes. I have food. It's like, yeah, right. If I if I really want That's something, I've I'll felt go. As well. Yeah, if I really want something, I'll go get it. Like, but I don't know. I don't need that shit for real anymore. And it's just like crazy. When I was younger, I was like. Man, what am I gonna do when I don't get fucking presents anymore? Like, what am I gonna do? And now it's like, why the fuck did I want all that shit in the first place? <laughs> it's like I don't use half of it. Having my it, uh, just the thought of having my parents spend money yeah. on shit I don't even yeah. need. It's like stop it. Every like every Christmas, let's say for example, I get like and I'm gonna sound like a spoiled little bitch, but let's say I get like t ten, eight presents. Yeah, and I give it back. Hey, Half of those, yeah. like no exaggeration, man. I would give her at least half of the presents. Yeah. I'd be like, I don't need this. Yeah, I don't need this. Like, I, I don't, I don't need it. I, because I always was thinking about how much money they were making. And yeah, I don't even know to this day. I don't even know how much money my parents were making. They don't but like I, telling me either. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I was like, just, just take it back. Like, I, I just feel bad yeah. that you're spending money on me. Yeah, and it's, and partly they love doing it though. Just like if you give someone something, they love you. Love like I personally True. love getting. If I'm getting a gift for someone, I I get so happy. Like I can't wait for them to see it. It's probably the so, worst thing ever to yeah. give them that lack of satisfaction. Yeah. Like because I, I would immediately I'd be like, I would open it. I'd be like, Hey mom, Take dad, that. I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. Get this shit back. Just don't <laughs> money back. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I remember telling they gave me a cologne one year, and I yeah. was not like at a point where I needed to make sexual advances <laughs> on girls yet. And I was like, I was like, hey, you didn't need I no don't, porn star. I didn't need a no porn star. I was like, <laughs> hey, I don't need this cologne. Oh, I said Alexis Texas. I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, nice, good choice. That, that, was, shows, that was way back. Yeah, I was gonna say that uh that shows that your your porn education is a little <laughs> bit antiquated, so that's funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. But I, I I told my I, I'd always tell my parents, I'd be like, Hey, how much was this? They'd be like, thirty dollars. I'm like, I'd rather have the thirty dollars. Yeah. I'll take the thirty bucks still. Just, I don't want this club. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis, Texas. That's awesome. Hannah Montana. Dude, oh shit. I wanted to talk to you about the um Neuralink thing. Yes. We, we almost absolutely. missed out on that. <laughs> okay, absolutely. We got so fucking off on everything else. Do you care if I hit the jewel? Oh, I don't give a shit. Um <laughs> is, is it cool I'm if I ask? First. Okay, cool. <laughs> what the f are you, you wanna hit my jewel? Huh? <laughs> can can I, as an individual, Jordan Fisher, can I can I rip that, hit that, can I Try that device. No, you hit it again, man. You do you. You do you. That shit might Can I, that, that device, that electronic cigarette that you have this in your head. fucking death machine. <laughs> Dude, but, A little bit low on, on the juices. Oh, uh, yeah, fuck. That might be a little. Uh, it's still got a little bit in it. Give her a so, so, like, on the sides, does it come through the sides? I don't even know where it comes from. It comes through. out the bottom, I think. And oh, really? I have no fucking. No, maybe through the top. I feel like that's okay, actually a fair amount. Okay, see this little tube right here? 
See this tube going through the middle? Yeah, yeah. I think it sucks it up through there. That's how you hit it. But but um, where does it actually come through at the bottom at? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Are we thinking too far into this? Yeah, I think so. Do, by the way, I before we get into Neuralink, because actually I, I listened to the Joe Rogan Elon Musk podcast yeah, about this, and I've I listened to this topic exactly. So I'm somewhat educated, but not as much as I wanted to be because I wanted to look up some videos on YouTube before looking like before coming here. Yeah. So with that being said, I um, I'm really interested and I'm excited. But before saying that, I've enjoyed the fuck out of this. This is like this has been one of my favorites in a while. Cause fuck yeah, this is a good one. I I could say more on that, but I'm not going to. But long story short, it's. It's fun to have people that you know better than yeah, other than most people. people. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not comparing the two. Yeah, but we've all, and I feel like we've always clicked. Like we've always just been able to be cool. I feel like we're a lot alike, honestly, as people. But um, dude, yeah, the fucking. So I, I really, I was at work one day, bored of shit, and I just looked up those videos. That, well, not the videos, but we had watched that one video on the, like the actual presentation of it. So when you go back to the Joe Rogan podcast with him, he's talking about, and I agree with this. So I took a class at Mo State called machine learning. So it's like a form of AI almost. Okay. And you know what AI is, right? Artificial intelligence. Yeah, absolutely. so it's just like computers learning from themselves instead of humans putting input into the computers and them giving us a response. It's computers learning from themselves without our input needed. So, like, have you seen, like, the Sophia robot? Like, it talks for itself. So, basically, Elon, the thing's creepy. Yeah, Elon Musk came on to this podcast with Joe Rogan basically saying AI is terrifying. And people think it's this big, cool thing with robots right now. They think it's cool, and it is cool, but it's terrifying because you have these robots that are so much smarter. Any Elon Musk, he was like, I couldn't – he's this, probably the smartest guy in the world right now. I, he was like, I couldn't hold an, a, a fucking candle to an AI robot. I listened to that yeah. today, he was, today, yeah. before this podcast, yes. Yeah, he's like, I couldn't hold it. What a, a quote. Kid. Yeah, exactly. It's And you, you put that in perspective. You're looking at this, and you're like, smartest guy in the world. Well, maybe not in the world, but like, he's a very intelligent guy. And you can't hand it, hold a candle to an AI robot that says something. And this is, you should listen to this guy. Unless, yeah, he might be fucking with you, but he he's might He's like, not. good for a human. Yeah. But I couldn't, ha- I couldn't hold a candle yeah. to artificial intelligence. Yeah, and it's scary, and it should scare you. It's like th- th- these things in the world, technology might not be everything. It's like, like it might not be great. You have these robots. So anyway, I took this machine learning class, which is basically a prediction model. So my teacher this past semester is like, um, so I predicted, ba- to make a long story short, there is a company, that a cancer company, that was like working on making – like. Uh, predicting malignant cancer and like being able to like point it out so this girl who was like the head honcho of her company or whatever so this guy and writes up this system he codes this system that makes like you put inputs into it so what you would do in it you'd come up in excel you'd have a big data set and you make a few calculations and you literally would take this file and put it into this system that he made and it would predict anything you wanted with these inputs you put into it. And it was crazy. I can't even begin to explain the coding that went into it or to make it possible. But you put this information into it, and it gives you a percentage, like, like uh, correct rate. Like, so he predicted malignant cancer with these inputs he had to the 99.2nd percentile. And he sent it in this company voluntarily saying, I don't want any money. He was like... You guys can take this information and use it as you please. And they rejected it. And they rejected it because the head honcho lady would have lost her fucking job because it predicted that's what she was working towards. That's what she was trying to do. But he figured it out. He figured it out through a computer system, through machine learning, which is part AI. You have to code it. Wait, this is your professor? Yeah. So this is part. What a G. I know. And he's a cool dude. He's like a country dude. So he's he's pretty fucking cool. But like he's a. but he was like, it's part AI, but you have to put inputs into it. So it's at the same time, it's not. But um, he was so like, she turned it down because it would have ta- cost her her job. That's what she'd been working at. So for something that would take her tens, of, like to the calculations involved in it, would take her years to figure out. It took a computer a minute and 30 seconds 
to, and it, when you run it, because we predicted our own things, when you run it, it just zips out so many calculations and it's just showing you each one. There's thousands of lines, thousands. And, and talking it, about exponential growth yeah. that you brought up at the beginning of this podcast, yeah. that so with this brain, AI is going to be like a real, so like, it's going to be like straight that, up. That's where Neur- Neuralink comes in. Oh. So what I noticed, I was confused. I was like, why is Elon Musk, if he's saying this is so dangerous, why is he making more AI? And then I read into this article, and I don't even have to look at it. I pretty much remembered it. He was like, um, the purpose of Neuralink is, so they basically drill, you saw this, you, you drill a hole in your brain, and they got these things that... Well, they, they drill like a little like segment into yeah. your skull. Yeah, and take it out, and <laughs> they put this plant into it, and they have these little wires that are like, a th- like I think it was like a tenth of the width of the one piece of hair. And it can literally connect. <laughs> it literally connects to your brain neurons, and they connect. So it's a chip that sits on the top of your ear up here with these wires that connect into your fucking brain. So I was confused. I was like, if you think AI is dangerous, why? What is the point of this? And I read in this article, and he's basically saying, with the growth of AI, we need something to combat it because if we let AI just take over, we could be fucked. We could be their slaves. And this is another cool Because it's going it. to be out of control yeah. of human beings. And this is inevitably. another thing is, what if that's what human beings are meant to get to? What if we were meant to get to this point of AI where we send all these robots, we make all these robots, and they go do everything we've ever wanted to, and we're kind of left in the dust? That's a sad thing to think about, but what if that's what it is? You know what I mean? What if we weren't meant to like be there? But that brings me back to the Neuralink thing with him. He's like, we need something to combat what this AI robots can do. And with this chip, say so. Say you want to know. Um, say you're trying to get somewhere with your maps, your Google Maps, and you have to search on your phone. How do I get to so and so? So if this chip's in your head, say you're saying, how do I get to San Jose, California? I don't know where the fuck I pulled that from, but. How do you get to San Jose, California? You don't have to go to your phone and look it up. You literally just say, oh, how do I get to San Jose? And it's just in your fucking head, and you just know. And that's what AI is. It's artificial intelligence. So that's what Neuralink is trying to accomplish? Yeah, and that's such a br- – I don't even know if that sounds right or if that is right, What I'm like that example. But, mm. yeah, it's artificial intelligence, so you immediately know something. Instead of having to search it, oh, like, God forbid having to go on Google and search something. But, like, you just know. Just like AI robots know. There's so much information going in and out of, like, a robot or a brain or whatever it may be, like a computer. Like, computers, the amount of data computers process is ridiculous. Like, like businesses, there's so much information on a daily basis being shared around the world. And that is growing technology. Because people use this information every day and they store it. And instead of having to put it all on paper in like a binder and having to put a sheet of paper in a binder that holds data, you have it in a computer. So that's part of like the exponential growth. It's like we're moving from paper to a comp- like information we got through a computer, put it on paper, to information we got through a computer, keep it on the computer, and then always have it stored on a hard drive or whatever it may be to a robot that automatically knows this information and we never have to know it again because we can get it in a heartbeat or from a chip that we put in our brain that we know and we'd never need another piece of storage in our life because we have a chip implanted in our brain that just knows everything. And it's scary, but it's like, what if humans were supposed to come to this point? Knows everything as far as, like, um, the internet? See, like, I don't are know. we on, like, know. full access to the internet? Yeah. Like, let's say, for example, like, like... Google. Like, you Google in your head, I guess. Uh, let's say even, even something as rudimentary as, hey, what's the score of the Cardinals game? Yeah. I mean, yeah. What score of this game? And I don't even know how to explain it because it's not here yet, and I don't know exactly what they're doing with it. But it'd be like, yeah, uh, six four. You get instant access. To it's that. instant, and it's just. And it, it kind of like retrieves itself as total recall, like a memory. I see. I don't even know. I I don't know because we're not even there yet. Like we, it's just bizarre because I get the idea of it. I get the idea of AI like robots knowing shit like boom just like that. Um. And, and it, but it's like how how do you know it just like that and it's just like something he brought up that was really interesting is like you're already a cyborg yeah 
You're already a cyborg. Yeah, because you have your phone at all. T- I remember this. And we really are. We are like yeah. the phone really you is have an, an extension of who we are. Exactly. It is. And that's like the same thing with social media. Like someone could go look at your page and be like, oh, this is who this person is because they post this and they share this or this and that. And it's like, this is who they are. And it's like, you are a cyborg. You're in someone's eyes. They have an image of you because of your page or you are who you are because of what you put out there and you always have access to this fucking phone and you always have access to whatever you want. You're not supposed to know all this shit. Like say like 10 years ago, you want to know the name of the song you're in a car and you can't think of it. You're you're just going to have to hope that one day you think of it. Now you pull up Snapchat, you hold your finger down it tells you what the fucking song is. It's bizarre. We are cyborgs. We are already partly like connected to technology in our brain just because we have, but it's not physically in us. You know what I mean? That's what AI would do, I guess. But like with the phone, it's like, it's an extension, but it's not you. This could actually make that technology. You, you know, what? Mm. does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It's like, and that's like the most broad way to put it. And that's as about as like far extensive as I know about it to this point. But it's just like, I don't, I don't know if I'd want to do that. I don't know if I'd want to be part of a like partly computer, but I just think it's risky. I don't think we know enough about it. And I think it's just, I do trust Elon Musk though. I trust him and what he's doing. I think it's really cool what he does with like SpaceX and Tesla. I, I do like those concepts and I think he's a very smart person. And the person. boring company yeah. and what, what else? He, he does so much more. Yeah. I mean, those are like his main things, but SpaceX, Tesla, Sorry, I had to fucking reply real quick. No, you're fine. Uh, SpaceX, Tesla. What else does he do? Boring company. He does SpaceX, Tesla, um, Neuralink. Um, I mean, SpaceX and Tesla are he pretty, started pretty with fucking big. X.com, which emerged. Like, yeah. They, they merged with uh, PayPal. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Then, it was PayPal. That was his big, like, outbreak. But... Which seems funny because which, PayPal... which merged with Peter Thiel. I don't even know about that. <laughs> it's like Peter Thiel, Thiel, Teal. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his last Teal, name, but Thiel, Thiel, Thiel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he he merged with it. uh yeah right right <laughs> he he merged with uh Peter Thiel Teal and with so he started with X dot com, which was trying to serve like the same fundamental need in this yeah. in society that that PayPal was serving and then they merged together. And that was like the start of Elon Musk. Yeah, man. All I know is that guy is a fucking genius. But he's like, unreal. He's and like he neural link is, he gets a lot of hate too. Like a lot of people dog on him. And it's like, how the, f- what are you doing with your life that you're going to dog on this guy? Like that's, I have more respect for Elon Musk than a lot of people. It's like, who else? You, this guy's trying to make the world a better place. Who else? He's looking out for you guys. You guys got no idea. And people don't look this far into it, but he, you, no one knows what AI could do. And this guy's trying to protect you from it. And you're going to go out and say, oh, he's trying to take over the world, everyone's brain. It's like, no, he's not. He literally says in this article, it's a defense mechanism. That's kind of like the, uh, you know, the grandparents saying, once they put a chip in you. Yes. Once they put a chip in you, you shouldn't trust in society whatsoever. It's like you don't know. That's what they're going to try to do. And hey, a lot of people predicted this. Yeah. Is my point. Like what, a lot of people predicted that's this. That's what I wanted but to talk about. That's crazy. Is like we're living in the day and age where shit that we thought would never happen. You're reading on news articles it's now. And you're just like, you don't know how to take it. You're like, I always looked at this as a younger age. I was like, this will never happen. Like, this is bizarre. This is out of our league. We can't do this. And now it's happening. You just look at it and you're just like, shit like we are advancing it's too abstract wait just kidding it's actually in our lifetime yeah that's that's gonna happen and it's and like i always looked at like how advanced we are and i'm like how could we ever get more advanced well you look back at like when someone made the first car or something how could we ever get more advanced they probably said the same thing they didn't know what a computer was they didn't know you could make a computer because one had never been invented mm-hmm. and now computers are here and it's just normal for us so, but I, I, I'll admit when I was a younger kid, I was like, oh, there's no way we can advance farther than we are now. Like we can make movies they can make special effects. Like there's no way. Like, and even to like step, upload your consciousness to a on, chip, 
onto like a digital circuit. Yeah. What happens if you take it out? Like, do you even know who you are anymore? Have you ever seen the show? What's that show called? The show with like they pretty much come up with like hypothetical realities that it's it's most it's not really like from an idealistic per like perspective, yeah. but more so like a cynical perspective. Oh, what's it? What's it called? Uh, I'm Why not too I, sure. I love it. It's it's a Netflix show. I don't know, man. I don't watch much TV anymore, for real. Okay. I. It's one of the few shows I've watched, and yeah. I've watched like I'd almost like every to. episode, and I absolutely cool. love it. Hmm. Why can't I think of it? It's a. It's a. I want to say it's a British show. I don't know why it's bothering me so much. I want to figure out the name of the show because I love it. It's a. It's a great show. I've seen like every episode. It's not Sherlock Holmes, is it? No, no, it's not. <laughs> that show's pretty sick. It's like a hypothetical dystopian interpretation of the future. If you were to implement like a very... Oh, Black Mirror? Black Mirror. Dude! I fucking love oh, that show. Oh my god, it's insane. Have you seen the newest season? There's like these two like dudes that are like great friends. Oh, I don't want to ruin it for you. Wait, wait, is the season... What the season? The newest season, it just came season out. Season four? I think so. Wait, did it just come out? Yeah, there's Like one in the like past Miley few months? Si- yeah. I haven't seen it. Okay, I haven't seen it. Say no, it's it, it'd be episode. That'd be season it, five. Yeah, I'm not gonna say anything. Then. Oh, that show. It's, it's crazy. That show's insane. It's absolutely. This episode fucks with you mentally. Good. It should. That's what every episode does. I mean, really, what they do is like a lot of them. They might just implement like one form of technology. Yeah. One form of technology, in comparison to what we are right now. Yeah. And then this is how it could go sideways. Yeah. I mean, and it's scary because it's there's a good chance that shit could actually happen. It's like you don't you don't know with technology. That's the thing. It's like you don't know what could happen. And so like these shows put it in perspective. Like watch yourself. Like this stuff is cool, but watch it. This is uh-huh. messing with your brain, and it could really mess you up as a society. Like, I and it already has. I think. I think there could be a Black Mirror episode made about how we are today, and just like. So like based originally in the early two thousands, and then yeah. the or evolution like, of like where yeah. it is to twenty what it's twenty nineteen. Like look what it does to relationships, like social media. People. Do you like, ever wonder about that? Oh yeah. Do you think it's gonna fuck with like our generation's marriage di- relationships? Marriage divorce rates are already so high, and I feel like they're, they're high, but they're also they've dropped because millennials are a lot more considerate of. Like they 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 go to college, they start yeah. their careers, and then they get married. Yeah, and actually they've dropped surprisingly. Really, this blew my mind. Yes, that's good. Because I I thought divorce rates lowered. Like I thought they were like out the roof. And Damn, I, was like, I thought they were definitely going up just because they always have. I I was surprised, but I also wasn't surprised. Like I was surprised counterintuitively. So because they've dropped because they're more calculated yeah. now. They're more like. Okay, we're gonna get married. This is going to be an agreement between the two yeah. of us, and it's a lot more calculated in comparison. Like my grandparents got married at eighteen years old. Yeah, that shit doesn't happen much anymore. That doesn't happen. So did my grandparents. They got married at eighteen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Did that doesn't happen? Yeah. So, yeah, I I was very surprised to find that yeah. they've actually dropped. Yeah, they had a and, kid too at eighteen. It's like. But with that being said, how many people are getting married? Have the marriage yeah. rates in themselves yeah. dropped? Or just wait I would I would argue age. yes because there's definitely something weird going on with yeah. our generation and like relationships and like the sustainability of like yeah. intimacy and it's, the excited element of I almost feel like enjoying we somebody have else's to wait presence. And see. Like I feel like we will have to wait and yeah. see. That's a wild part. Yeah, it's like because social media is taking off now. Like this is the time where it's taking off. So I guess we'll have to see because we'll be the first generation to like know. I guess. Or maybe a few above us. I hate to do this. I probably gotta head out of here soon. Cool. Yeah. Well, we can call this. We can call this quits whenever you want. But uh, man, this has been sick. <laughs> we Two just, hours, seventeen minutes. Are you shitting me? No. Nah. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, man. Dude, I was actually scrolling through your podcast. I was like, uh, how long is this going to be? How long do I'm thinking this going to be? And I seen like two hours of some of your longer ones. Uh huh. Like, damn. Like, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Been a pretty good one. I love it. This is a good one. Yeah. I enjoyed this a lot. Yeah, this I enjoyed fun. this a lot. I just felt like it all flowed out. 
Yeah. I hate that I have to fucking cut it off. No, you're cool. Yeah. Dude, honestly, whenever you got to go. Yeah, whenever you got to go. got to fucking sleep at some point. It's, <laughs> it's like was going to the bathroom. You, when you got to go, you got to go. When you got to go, you got to take a piss, you know? You just got to let it I'm leave. glad we started it when we did. Yeah. I'm glad you called it and you're like, because I, honestly, I probably would have stayed up there for another 15, 20 minutes and yeah. just talked. Talked. <laughs> Done that all night. Yeah, yeah. I'm Done the exact same thing that we right did. <laughs> Do you sweat when you're doing these? Sometimes it's not as hot down here as it was really? like a few nights ago. Yeah, Dude, on Friday. I just feel like I'm naturally cold, like on the inside. So it's like I'm burning up cold right now. Blooded. Yeah, yeah, literally, dude. Like when I start sweating, I like this is like the one time I stress. When I start sweating, I'm mm-hmm. just like, oh god, fuck, I gotta move around. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm this shirt is literally drenched right now. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> well, th- dude, the camera just died. No yeah, joke. Really? The camera just—that's a calling. Literally just the second. Yeah, like literally just done. Oh, see damn. it going out. Yeah. Shit. Well, let's call it quits. All right, man. Cool. I appreciate you having me on here. I will say this is weird, but I can't wait to hug you whenever we go out. I'm Fucking excited. Right. Hell Fucking yeah, man. Right, baby. Oh man.